and good afternoon yes we're back and no that's not a 172 or anything with a <coughs> propeller on the front of it yeah we're in jets uh we finally uh, made the leap um and this is as far as i've got uh i, I i'm in it. it it's loaded and i'm at an airport i've done nothing more than this um so yes it's the zebo 738 um that we're all in um and we're going to try and attempt attempt uh to fly from where we are here at east midlands airport over to dublin uh, i'm joined by those the other side of me uh to attempt to do this as well by uh, captain chaos good afternoon good afternoon are you looking forward to this chaos absolutely can't wait <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other side of chaos and um one of the people hoping to teach us a few things uh is uh, sam good afternoon Good afternoon. What have you let yourself in for, Sam? Oh, uh, I'm loving this now in the Jets. <laughs> the uh, All right. wow, chaos! Thank you very much. A Eighteen months in a row. You must have something wrong with you. Um, <laughs> the the other the other side of uh, of Sam and one of the other people uh, being our um, our mentor uh, this afternoon is uh, Chris Brown. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And the other side of Chris, he's back again. We can't get rid of him. Um, he's going to be the first one to crash into a fireball. Uh, it's Norris. Good afternoon. What? I can fly now, you know. <laughs> the only plane you've flown so far is a 172. Yeah, and twice you have chosen to land in the dark grass area. That was quite amusing last night, actually, landing on the grass yeah. strip in France in the dark. Well, yeah. I crash landed on the wrong side of the road. So, yes, uh, we're going to attempt to start from cold and dark, um, as this thing is inside, um, to um, program in the FMC, uh, which is the complete, to, uh, to me, trying to work out what all these switches uh, overhead do, and then fly it um, to Dublin. That's the plan. Um, Didn't Jeremy Clarkson once say, how hard could it be? How hard can it be, exactly. Um, so yes, we're all in um, all in the same plane, various liveries. Um, so I don't know what to do next. It's over to these guys then. How do we get some life into this thing? Do you want to go, Chris, or would you like me to? Uh, let me do the easy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> complicated job. <laughs> <jobs. laughs> okay, have a look up on your overhead panel. Uh... You'll see. In the second column of stuff, there's a screen. Underneath the screen is two dials, and underneath the left of those two dials is a uh, guard cover, which is up. Yeah. If you pull that guard cover down, she lives. We that was lights. it. C can we go now? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Done. Yeah, we have lights on now. If you look outside, you're in Dublin. <laughs> that's quite easy. <laughs> Well, that, that bit I can remember, that bit I can cope with. Thanks for watching. So what's that doing? Is that putting us on to ground power? No, that's just battery power. Oh, okay. Now after this, we have to check oh, yeah, yeah. the load that there's three guards, standby power and two disconnects. Those must all be closed. Yep. Hang on, hang on. Where are they? What? Just below the switch you just flicked. Yep. There's three yep. more just like it. One sideways and two red ones. Oh, yep, yep. They're, they're all closed. closed. Yep. Right, and then below that you've got ground power, but below ground power there's a thing called bus transfer, which must also be closed. Yep. Yep. Okay, with all that set, you can now click down on ground power. Okay. And she should play a merry tune, and now you're running on ground power. I had a bong. If you have a look down under the glare shield, your master caution will be on. You might want to just click that to turn. Reset. Yep. Okay, now we have to tell the plane where it is. Oh. Uh, FMC if time. Right up, if you look right up above that panel, you'll see there's two white dials, a left and a right IRS. Yep. Okay, click the left one onto nav. It's two clicks. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> where? Above the main above switch the panel at the top. Yeah. Sort of a, a higher up. Uh, hang on, panel. I've got that set somewhere. There we go. Set them to what? Uh, the left one to nav, and wait for the align light above it to come on. Yep. Yep. 
gate. Once the align light's on, set the right one to nav as well. And okay. Right, now that we're up there, to the left of that, there's a big guard cover called ELT. Just need to make sure that's close. Yep. And to the right, there's a switch all by itself called service interphone. You need to make sure that's off. It is. Yeah. And just to the right of the service interphone, there's two covered switches called EC. Those must be closed, and you should be able to see the word on for anything. Yep. Yep. Okay. We're done on that part of the panel. Now we need to come down a bit. Um, I believe next up is passenger. That's the bottom right corner of the main overhead display. Ooh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Passenger <laughs> oxygen up at the top, right where you were, that's switch. Uh, passenger oxygen, that's covered at the moment. And your three landing gear lights should be on just below that. Yeah, and green, yeah. yeah. And on the right-hand side of the panel, you've got stall warning one, stall warning two. Push those and hold them until you get a... Clicky, clicky, clicky noise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, now come down to the bottom of the main grid. Okay. Right, the second switch of the right-hand bank of switches is positioned. We need that to be on steady, so it's clicking it back. A. Hey. Nice panel. If you look at the little compass in the middle, to the right of that there's some light switches. I want the strobe, position strobe. Yeah, you want it on ah, steady. Okay. Yeah. I think oh, yeah, sorry, you're on steady, yeah. 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 Okay, then the two on the right, technically you should turn those on. They're... Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff, please. When you turn them on, that's for the co pilot to do a walk around, make sure that everything's working. And you should hear an announcement as you. For the anti collision. Uh, no, the wing off, uh, turn it on, and the wheel well turn it on. Okay. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. Yep, yeah, got an announcement saying the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. <laughs> <laughs> right, now the last bit of the initial setup go down to your FMC. Okay. Uh, click the init ref. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to enter EGNX and put that into the second button down on the left. Actually, go in. Where would I see it's it? Oh, yeah, EGNX. Oh, yeah, EGNX, yeah. EGNX yeah. Okay, then you need to put the gate number you're at and put that in the third button down. Which was 11 for me, wasn't it? Yep. Right, now click the next page button in the group of buttons below the screen. And it will take you to where your GPS is picked up for. Uh huh, yeah. Yeah. Right, click the left button next to either of those two, they should be the same. Why can I not insert that into mine? Well, you can, you just got to click it first. Then you go previous page and click the fourth button down on the right. Okay. Yeah, but mine were not uh, pasted in uh, the airport or anything. Have you cleared the thing at the bottom of the nav data out of date thing? Mine's still showing that, but everything's gone in. I 
So that's told it where we are and what gate we're at then. What gate we're at. Yeah, and those two white dials we turned earlier are the gyros which spin up to a ridiculous speed and keep uh, knowledge of where the plane is and how it's moving. Which is where you got that um, latitude and longitude from. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay, Sam, do you want to do the CDU if we're doing a load? Yeah, you can do, mate. Right then. So, Nas, are you okay? Have you got the airport, the reference airport put in, in the pos it page? Yeah, I need something. <laughs> Whichever one you're at. I can't remember which one you're at. I think uh, the the Nas will be on 16. Oh, okay. I will just take... 16, so I have... The reference airport and gate 16 in. Right, now go next page. Yes. Then click on the button next to one of the two GPS uh, coordinates. Is then go previous. It should just put a number in the bottom underneath where it says index it just says in real uh, entry oh there it is right then go previous page and yeah. the fourth button down on the right plops that those coordinates where it says set IRS well, with you so far yes I have that okay, okay oh. we're ready oh Wow. So, now comes the really boring bit. So, if you click on route now from your pos init page, uh, uh, we'll where were we? Bottom right. Route. Okay. Hang on. Program, legs, menu. Uh, I'm going anything else. No route at yes, the bottom. You have route on, on the. Oh, display. down there. Yeah, I've got it. Okay. <laughs> so now you've got a page uh, titled RTE you've got an origin and a dest yeah. with yeah. four yeah. square boxes so you should at the bottom left have something that says EGNX as well yes mm. oh, that in the top left nope so I'm... your origin well you can type that in if you type EGNX in the scratch pad EGNX and put that where uh, in the origin box, so the top left button. There we have it. No, I got invalid entry. Is it just press clear, and then try and type it again? It's just it's just got to say E G N X, nothing else. Where's the clear button? Uh, bottom, bottom right of the uh, right. F M C. Oh yeah, down there. Uh, right, let's go E G N X again. E G N X. <coughs> Invalid entry. Am I doing something wrong? Can you just click that top right and just see if it comes up or not? Oh, sorry, top left. No, I just get a... Try to clear it uh, doubled uh, because some uh, I have that too. That is All right, on. All right on. What does it say at the bot very bottom right of the screen? That's right. Yeah, I've done it because ah. it, it had the invalid um, nav data out of date. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It leaves that update of things. So yeah, 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 I've yeah. done it now. Right, okay. Clear that. Yeah, before you can, uh, yeah, I've got, <laughs> I've got EGNX in there now. So the next one, you want to put EIDW, which is the ICAO for Dublin. Uh, Echo India Delta Whiskey. Echo India. What? Delta. Delta Whiskey. Delta. Danish Whiskey. <laughs> and put that top right, I'm guessing. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's top right in Dest. Okay. So now you should have both of those in there. Yeah. Yeah. This when we put the previous file that Chris very kindly downloaded for us into our X plane. If you now type E I G N X and then E I D W and then zero one. That's all one word. W zero. Yeah. 
and then if you press the second left button down where it says co root, it should come up. Invalid entry. Invalid entry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Clear that and make sure it's um it's completely empty. There's no writing on the bottom left of that screen. Nothing. Before you type type that out. So if you type E G N X <coughs> Where should I e put that? X. Second left down, no co root. Then e Company root that stands for. W01. Invail yep. entry. No, it's in, <laughs> it's in there for me now. That got in. That's yep. good then. Right, no, so you just need to check then your explain folder. So if you go into the output folder in the main explain file, I have put it in there. Oh. Should yeah, be a FMS file entitled EGNX EIDW01. That is what we're trying to load into the. Uh, yeah, I, FM try, I just check if this is the right. So that's what we got that from um, Simbrief then. Yeah. That's cool. Which we'll learn about pretty, pretty, at another yeah. time. Yeah. We can do a separate video on that, or stream on that, on how to yeah. uh, plan a route in Simbri. That could be handy for YouTube, actually. Just be handy just to go through the little the figures and everything on there. Yeah. It is. It's an invalid little tool. It's so good. <coughs> right, is everybody okay with that so far? Yeah. Yep. That across yeah, on the right. Heaven. You got it, good. Yeah. That's good, then. So there's, across from that, something that says flight number. If you're really sad, like me. And me. <laughs> You'll know that the flight number <laughs> is FR five three seven, which is my Ryanair flight number. Or we can use the one Chris has created for us, which is Sims stuff zero 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 one. So you could put SNS zero one in, and that will create. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just a title for where it'd save it on the FMC in real life. SNS zero one. There you go. And as far as Chris's flight plan is telling us, we'll be taking off on runway 27. So, third down on the left, you've got the runway page. If you just put 27 into the scratch pad and then insert that, you should be all good. So if the wind changed when you were doing this and you had to change runway, you just change it there. Yeah, what, you, what usually happens if that does happen is before you start taxiing, they'll tell you, especially at an airport like East Miners where there's only one main taxiway to each end of the runway. Yeah. Um, so oh. you can change that. You can change and adjust it as when. Okay. That, that was that was quite good. That was easy. Yeah, we, we haven't programmed the whole thing now, have we? Because you've got it from Simbrief. <laughs> no, you've not programmed no. it. Have points. So, <laughs> if you press next, you'll get some really confusing stuff come up. <laughs> that basically is your route. Yeah. Yeah. So on the left are your airways, so you should have direct then UQ, UQ4, UL8, UL28 and M145. Yeah. Yes. And then on the right are the waypoints that will guide the plane, Babka, so TNT, Azip, yeah. Babka, Azip, yeah. So if that's all in there, mm -hmm. press yes. activate on that one, you should hear a beep, yeah. I think. Uh, and your execute light should have uh, it is. lit up yellow, so if you click that one next. I have. And then you will get a uh, on the bottom right. It should say perf in it. Yeah, which yeah. Which is performance yeah. initialization. More importantly, top left will say ACT, which means actual. Yeah. yeah. Made a change. It will say mod. ACT root. Yeah. Yeah. So now you've done that, you can click on performance initialization page. Did you want to take this one, Chris? Well, you don't want to do a departure. Yeah. Cool. Then uh, let me do the departure. You do the performance initialization. You probably know more about that. Fantastic, no problem. So now we need to go in to our fuel weight and balance on the tablet. So if you press home on a tablet, right square, there is a fuel weight and balance. If yeah. you click on that, yeah, tell us what the plane's weighing. So zero fuel weight so far. Take off weight etc so now we need the pdf file that chris did for us and we need the third page down 
Yeah, I don't seem to have that PDF for, but never mind. <laughs> I'll tell you what's on it anyway, mate. You I just tell me what's on it and I'll input it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So. Yeah, I, I don't have that. Uh, yeah, well, I, <laughs> I, I, I might have to click on something and download it. I, I've got it. That's fine. <laughs> So the first one we want to click on, your payload should probably say 8 kilograms. Mine says 5.6. But... Yeah. Well, mine says 12.4 pounds. Oh, you want pounds? Payload. My payload says 36.3 <laughs> in my app. You might want to adjust your settings so that you're on kilograms chaos rather than pounds. Hang on then, it's... Uh, if you uh, go into uh, configure, then general config. Top one global units. You can switch oh, right. from pounds to kilograms. Yep, all done. So, right. in there, if you click on where it says uh, whatever your payload is, you get a little calculator come up. Yep. So the way Chris has done this, we our payload, which is basically our passengers and any cargo, we've got dead bodies because Ryanair do carry dead bodies. Apparently. Mm. Okay. Um, <laughs> is eighteen point three tons. So if you put eighteen point three in there, eighteen, and then. The bottom right, just click the blue arrow. Yep. That done. should uh, you should see the plane drop as well because it's been loaded. It did, yeah. <laughs> um, that will change the zero fuel weight a little bit as well, so it's almost bang on. So the fuel zero fuel weight should now be fifty nine point seven tons. Correct. Yeah. It's not. And that's it's not on my so. What's your fuel showing, uh, Nas? It could be that you've got a lot of fuel. A uh, hundred and that. Uh, no, I just uh, lowered it to 10.5 now, but uh, it shows uh, 1.9 at the set FW and the toe is 170. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> that's because Noz is in it. <laughs> yeah, he's probably got about a 900 horsepower engine in it. So he's he has, he, yeah, he's got, <laughs> he's got more engines strapped to it. Right, uh, so below uh, zero fuel weight, 59.7 you've got fuel in yeah. green so if you click on that it's suggesting that our fuel today is 6 tons so if we pop 5.6 in there Point six. same again with the blue arrow okay, okay. So that changes again our takeoff weight uh, to 65.3 it does and then it'll also adjust potentially your takeoff center of gravity and your zero fuel weight center of gravity. Yeah, so it's taking the fuel out of the center of the plane. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So, what we need to do now is go over to uh, the FMC with that information. However, you can cheat on the uh, Zebo. So, the top left, FMC, if you click that button, that should pop straight up with 65.3. It does. It does. Is... Yeah. Then, in the plan, for fuel you can put 5.6 next to that so it says plan then fuel what that is i mean it doesn't i don't think it's simulated in this but what you would do is say you've got 5.6 tons of fuel which is what it's showing and your flight is only a five ton fuel flight you'd put 5.0 in the plan and then 0 0.6 in the reserves but that's mainly just for if pilots get in trouble for using too much fuel like at Ryanair <laughs> <laughs> so you don't actually have to do anything there although you can just if you like put zero yeah. in yeah I've put 5.6 5. 5. in the reserves I'm going to put 0. 0.6 but you can put zero in the reserves okay and then cost index so I'm going to go back to the top of the flight plan that we've got from Simbrief a cost index so your cost index is zero to a hundred uh usually it's worked in zero to a hundred it would sort of quick you're going to climb how fast you're going to fly so obviously with this being Ryanair they usually use quite a low one but it's given us a one of 17 today 17. so if you pop 17 yeah I think standard Ryanair one is six for whoever they're flying <laughs> don't want you to spend too much <laughs> Okay, okay. So now on the left side, everything should be filled in. Yep. Yep. And then on the right hand side at the top will start. It will calculate what it thinks you should be flying at. Yeah, 242. Yeah, an economical flight. But what Chris has got us is flight level 280. So if you put 280 into the scratch pad, 
right, just click that in. Okay. Ooh. It falls out you, and then you'll get some more little options. Yeah, you do. So, again, something that you get on Simbrief will be your average wind for the trip. Um, the average winds it's showing on here for today will be 200 degrees at 68 knots. Mm. So if you put two, six, eight, six, eight on the cruise wind just below where you've just inserted the uh, flight level. I put what, two, 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 six, eight. Yep. Mm. Two, six, eight, forward slash six, eight. 200. I've done that wrong, actually. But it's actually 200 forward slash 68. Oh. <laughs> okay. Sam. 200 forward slash 68. I'll put your cruise. That will just be the plane working out how much power it might need when you come to okay. cruise. Yeah. And then below that, you've got eyes of, dev, uh, eyes of deviation and um, your top of climb. I need to just remember where the report on this briefing so we're climbing to 2000 uh, 28000 feet uh, and the temperature at top of climb will be minus 43 cool. so Did you put minus 43 for 43 yes so where your little number pad is your bottom bottom bit you've got a plus minus and in the it's not the next one down it's the uh, fifth button down, uh, fourth button down, sorry, on the right, the TCOAT bit. So if you pop that in, yeah, it will uh, work out the deviation temperatures. Oh, you got minus seven, minus four, minus 45, yeah. minus 43. Okay. So that's just the plane working out how hot the fuel's going to be, how hot the engine's going to be, how much thrust and how much... And we've got a transition altitude of 6,000. Yeah. The Bruce Midlands Airport is actually 6,000. The, the exec light's lit up again now. Yeah. Or execute. And okay, that makes sense so far. Yeah. The information we got from Simbrief, once we go through Simbrief, that, work out how it gets the information, that'll make a little more sense. Yeah. So that's everything sorted for that. You can now click your execute button. For that one and then again like Chris said before that becomes your active performance yeah. initialization page now so it's no longer just the performance initialization it's the active which is what the plane's going to fly to uh, so bottom right now you've got another in one limit in one limit yeah if you click on that one so this basically now is your engine page so this will be selecting the takeoff power which can be uh, a wind temperature uh, whether the runway is wet whether the runway is icy so our outside temperature today at East Midlands is showing for me at 8 degrees C so if we put a forward slash and an 8 and then top left hand side click that, that in forward click. slash by the way is very important if you don't put that in it yeah. puts it into the left hand side and then it doesn't give you your takeoff yeah, speed. It will put you in a selected temperature rather than an outside actual okay, temperature. So plus 8 degrees, 97.8, 97.8 is then got in. Yep. That's it. So, this being Ryanair, we'll do a derated takeoff because they're crap like that. <laughs> All the rail lines are available. Um, so, I will go for a 24. So 26, 24, and 22K, that is your uh, maximum engine thrust. So 26,000 pounds is the maximum on each side. Right, okay. Very rare that you would actually use that. So you click up, so we click on the takeoff one then, next to 24? Yeah, so takeoff one, 24, that will just give you a little bit of a drop from 100%, just to sort of save the engines a bit, so you're not overpowering too much, nice filling the cabin got... with smoke, <laughs> things like that. We've had the ACT drop down to that now then. Then you've got uh, take off one and climb one selected for that. So we can now go into take off from that page, bottom right again. Okay. <coughs> oh, first off, the bottom right hand side, there is a QRH off or on. That's off. If you 
have next to your V1, VR, and V2. There should be an arrow with three dashes. Yeah. yeah. That's going to give you a selected uh, speed based on the runway that we're taking off on and the. So. With the flaps, so because the weather's relatively okay today, we're not particularly heavy. A standard flap setting of five degrees. Well, I am heavy. <laughs> well, we know that. <laughs> so just put five. Yep. So five, and then that's in the top left. Ah, and that's now set to QRH at one three seven one three eight. And then the scout hand comes on. <laughs> Yeah, this, is what, this is what happens. This is what happens when you fly with the ruffians on Ryanair. Exactly. <laughs> you get to turn their phones off. <laughs> I just checked mine so, to make sure it was off. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite embarrassing as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do now? We've inputted that center of gravity to work out the. Um, pitch and stab setting that we'll be putting in. So if we go back to the tablet, to the tablet. so just below the takeoff weight fine. The first one below that is your takeoff centre of gravity which yeah. is 24.1. Yeah. So again, you can input that or you can just click on that button and it will tell you 24.1. Yeah, it's got trim setting. Yeah. Your trim setting should be 4.8. Um, hang on, where, what? Clicking where? Oh, in the one on the third one down the left. Yes, yes. below the... Uh, 24.1, yeah, trim 4.8, yeah, I got it. Yeah, so... We'll come back to that shortly, <coughs> although you can actually set it now if you wish. So if you use your stab trim, if you drop it just below 5. That's just below the FMC, the big wheel. Yeah, so where your throttles are. On, I've got a view set to that somewhere. Somewhere. Just five. I've got so many views. <laughs> Where's, I'm sure I have one set for that. Oh, I'll just go up to that. Oh, okay. um, so on five, yeah. Actually, five. Okay. Yep. It's imported. The last part now is just to put your speeds in so your v1 speed is the point that you can't actually stop the aircraft if there's a problem yeah so that'll be 138 and then your vr speed which is your rotation speed which is where the uh, the uh, not the autopilot the co-pilot will call out rotate to pull back on the uh, stick to lift the plane into the air that's come up at 139 so it's quite quick and then your v2 speed is 147 Seven. So, taking that speed of 147 now, if you go above of the autopilot panel, so you want to come right up. No. Yes. But your panel, it's got all sorts of business going on. So, your altitude you'll find should say 28,000 on it now. No, mine says four and a half. Yeah, <laughs> mine, mine says 500. Because we haven't changed it on the thing. <laughs> yeah. So we can change that to 28,000 then, can't I? Yep. And then a quick cross check of your heading. We are taking off on runway 27, so the heading for that is 271, I believe. Oh. 260, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, yeah, so you can go 269. And then in the IAS mark or your speed hold, you want to put your V2 speed, which is a 147. IAS. Uh, uh, 269. Uh, 147. Okay, 147. And apparently it's on Ryanair. Right once you've done that, you can switch your flight directors on. Apparently that's what they do. So if you click the left hand one first, which is yours, you'll get a green light above it. It says MA, which means it's master. And then if you click across, yeah, the other one. so once you've clicked that, 
that becomes a slave, which is the one that works for the co-pilot. But obviously, yours is the master, so you yeah. yours is the one. Okay, well, that's and then fine. that that is set. See, pretty much set, except for your departure now. So it's got the weights, it's got the balance, it's got the power for the takeoff, it's got your route inputted. So if you click on uh, back down on the FMC, if you click on the legs page now, legs you should page. have. Yeah. Yeah. You should have a list of the legs and it will have assigned speeds and altitudes to them all. Yes. It does. That basically is your route without uh, departure and arrivals, which is what Chris is going to take us through in a second. So that is pretty much set now. Cool. So that is that part. So a lot easier. Of. If we didn't have the sim brief, then we'd have had to input all those um, legs. The, yeah, the aeroplane will work it out based on the weights you import, so you don't have to use uh, sim brief. Sim briefs are really helpful for the weather and winds, things like that. Yeah. It does make it a lot easier. Yeah, it does. It just gives you all your information in one place, so you can just input it all okay so cool. this basic basic setup of your fmc you do root. i miss something here probably <laughs> <laughs> oh take off reference page two i have nothing in there yet should there be anything in there you can press legs or next page you yeah you take off ref Takeoff reference should be flaps five degrees, center of gravity twenty four point one. Your three V speeds on the Yeah, I have that. Yeah, that's cool. okay. Yeah, that's... You're all set. Yeah. So yeah, that is a basic setup of the FMC. Cool. Weights measures. Alright, departures and arrivals. Yeah. Uh, click the depth R button below the screen on the FMC. Uh, yep. Yeah. How do right, I get under those? Say again. Because I, uh, when I press next page, it's just not showing that uh, yeah, page. That yeah, yeah. Don't press next page. Press next page. Now push the button below the screen, which says depth R. Second row right down, third from the left. Just above the A button. Oh, there. I have it. I have it. Okay, first of all, we're going to do the departure. Uh, top line is EGNX, and to the left of it, so, yeah, so click that. Yep. You should have runway 27 already selected on the right, because we put that in on the main screen. Yes. Okay, on the left, there's two possible departures. Sim brief says we're using TNT 2N, so click the button next to that. We've got a little bing. And then execute. Okay, and the execute button should be lit up, so you can click execute. Okay, done. Yes. Right, then click depth R again. Okay. Yes. Right, now we're going to do the arrival. So we've got EIDW, and to the right of that, ARR. Click. Yes. Okay, and stars and approaches. Right, so the, there's many pages of these. The one we want is bags one x So now, Noz, you can click next page. Bags one x yeah. yeah. Yeah, click that. We'll see there's no transition to select, but now on the right we've got various approaches. We're going to choose ILS 28. The symbol we've again told us we're coming in 28. Okay. okay. Bags only one x Yeah. There it is. Right, then on the right, ILS 28, and then you're going to click the lap mode transition because that's the only transition. Um, I've got a transition. It might not show that up on yours because yours. We, we've got the older um, nav data, Chris, on. So uh, okay. Then if there's no transition, it's fine. You don't actually. Just click that. execute. Okay, that's, the, that's just none. Okay, then click execute. Done. Yep. Right, now that comes the really tricky bit. Just to the left of all the autopilot stuff, there's four dials there. There's RST, CTR, TFC, STB. Autopilot? Where the heck is that? 
uh, right below the window. Those ones there, okay. Right, the one marked CTR is currently pointing at the map. If you click, to, uh, turn that to the right, we'll go to PLN for plan. Yeah. Right, now you should see the second display has now changed to show a line. complete circle and you've got the line coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Now on your FMC, push the legs page and then position your camera so you can see that screen and the FMC. So the legs page, yeah? That's it. Uh, yeah. Mine does nothing. What, when you push legs? Yeah. Oh. It should take you to Act Root Legs, page one of six. Why is mine not looking like Steve's? <laughs> I, get, I get that a lot. Yeah, well, <laughs> to be fair, on mine I got M O D R T E, not A C T R T. Yeah, modified. Yes, modified. Then you must push your exact button. Ah, right. Okay, there we go. Now we wait. <laughs> okay, the page should start off in purple with D two seventy eight. Yeah. If you look on the screen just above it, you should see the first point there is D two seventy eight. Which it is. Yep. Right, now if you look at the bottom right of the FMC, there's a button called Step. If you click that, it'll take you to the next waypoint on the map and... Ah, it moves the plan around. Okay. And then basically, you just click through to make sure that you've got a complete route. And it follows the route all the way to the... Oh, I mentioned, maybe you mentioned that in that video you did, Chris. Um, so keep clicking them until you end I up... I cannot get mine to work with that. Uh, did you push the legs button below the screen on the FMC? There we go, we've arrived. Yeah, the next page button, yeah. No, legs, not legs. Legs. page. L-E-G-S. Just oh, below the R there it is. Oh, God. Language barrier. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's barrier? <laughs> <laughs> What's your okay. this? Uh, Right, yeah, mine's, right, yeah, mine's followed all the way through. Right, once you're happy that everything is there, there's no discontinuities, which will actually say on the screen discontinuity, um, you can turn that CTR switch back to map. Uh, CTR. Back to map. map. Cool. Okay. Right, uh, we're just about ready to go, I think. Yeah. The one there thing I should do now is I would set the flaps to five at this point, so everything is set. Um, is that? Oh god, I can't remember which bloody views I've done where. There's so many buttons I've mapped. I can't remember what they all are. That's the overhead panel. That's that one. I need to move the zoom up. Right, set the five. Um, Hopefully I have... Ten, that's five, oh. I think. Um, I'm not sure about your checklist, Sam, but my checklist here runs through the overhead panel, top to bottom, left to right. Yeah, mine's the same. Okay, cool. You want to take it? Yeah, I'll go through the... Five, okay. Go with me, so... So the captain's, if you click on your uh, tablet now, you've got the captain's pre-flight procedures. A lot of them are just procedures you don't actually need to do. Um, so I might I might be tempted to go off this by memory from what I usually do. Well, I've got quite a nice checklist here if you want me to cover Oh yeah, yeah, you run, you run through that if you want, Chris. I suppose we should do it properly, <laughs> shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, basically you want to be looking at your overhead panel now. Most of the stuff coming up is all in nice order. Okay. Right, the first things to check, are the, is the RS aligned? Basically, if your screens are showing correctly with a proper artificial horizon, it's aligned. Then, top left of the overhead panel, 
the very bottom of that first panel there's a thing called your damper yeah it should be there should be a red light on yeah and the red light should extinguish on that same panel there's a red covered switch called alternate flaps position that should be closed then yeah. below that the second one down now vhf nav should be in the center normal yeah irs in the center normal yeah fmc in the center normal yeah the display source should be on auto which is just below that yeah yes and display control panel should be normal in the yeah 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 right if we skip past that little gauge below that the next dial down is cross feed should be pointing up and down yep. obviously those lines if it's open it'll be flat so it makes a circuit you don't want it like that you want to leave it in. Mm -hmm. and our fuel pumps turned off which should be yeah Give me a sec. Oh, right. Next part is on the console. We just need to do a quick fire test. So you want to be looking just below the throttles. Yeah. Okay. Okay, to the left of the big number one, there's a button there which says test. You want to move it to the left and hold it. You should see some lights come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then move it to the right, a bell should go off and everything should light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, right. an, that's an all you don't want to hear when you're flying. Yeah, yeah. if you hear that at any point again, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, to the right of number two, you've got a thing that says engines test. Click it left towards number one, and you should see three greeny blue lights come on. Yeah. Yeah. And the same for number two. Mm -hmm. Right, back to the overhead panel. Okay. On the second column, you've got kind of a, a little display. Underneath that, some buttons. Underneath that, some dials. And underneath that, you've got two switches, cabin util and I think it's IFE pass seat. Yeah. Those must both be on, so they're down. Yeah. Yep. Okay, now we're going to start the APU. So... Your left-hand fuel switch, which is on the bottom of the left-hand column, switch that on. Uh, Basically, aft one yeah. should be on. Oh, I hear a whirring. Right, now, on the bottom of the overhead panel, you've got your APU switch just left to center. Move that down to on, and then push and hold it to start for three seconds. Low the oil pressure light come on. Yep, and you should have an EGT dial which is moving. Uh, not yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> I don't mind this I don't know. has moved. Now maybe you didn't hold it on start for long enough. Okay, let's try it again. I'll just hold it ah, until it starts to spin and yet. then yeah, then let go. Still holding. Have you got it right down on start? Yeah. Hold it. Okay. The EGT dial isn't doing anything. Let, let it go again and start again. Press it down again. This is my view slightly. Like that, Not doing a thing. Your pump switched on, Steve, definitely. Yeah, aft one is on. The low pressure light's gone out on it and yeah. everything. And the low, pr low oil low pressure's come on above that EGT dial. That's a start. <laughs> Try turning the APU completely off and then go back to start again. Okay. Off. On. Hold it. Not a thing. Right, when well, he's doing that bit, I just need to pop down and uh, put the chicken on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, not doing a thing. Ground power is still connected, Steve. Uh, ground power is showing us on. Got the light above it. Has he done something switch wrong? That switch down. The ground power switch, just in case. Click APU off and go to on and hold it down to start. There's a fault light next to the um, low oil pressure one. Is that anything? Uh, that's normal until it okay. started. Yeah, oh, that... no, hold on, fault shouldn't come on. Uh, does yeah, you know, mine only the low oil pressure came on on mine. Yeah, I got a fault light on. Okay. Go to your menu, uh, flight edit failures. Yeah. Then click the fix all systems bottom left and then done. Or I think apply changes or whatever it's. Right, four lights going out now. Let me try and click start again then. I think Steve just forgot to top up the oil, says Larwood. <laughs> Brand new 737, you broke it already. <laughs> yeah, it's still not moving. Have you read? What about that your dumper? Should that not be on? Yep, we went through that. It should be on. Yeah, because he's uh, he, he has your dumper off. Where? Top left of the overhead panel. Yeah. That should be on, Steve. <laughs> that your damper. Yes, yeah, so do you remember saying the light gone out? Uh, okay. Then try again. Because you cannot start with, with up. Yeah, it's turn it off. On. Hold down start. My right, lower pressure's come on. And then hold down start. Should move. Not doing a thing. I got. Yeah, aft fuel's definitely on because the low pressure light's gone out above it. But sure, um, right, Steve, where you are on that panel. Yeah. On the far right hand side. Yeah. Above the auto manual panel. Light coloured panel. Uh, yeah. The top. Uh, research fan switches on. So just below the gauge there, there's a isolation valve. If you click that to auto, uh, what's it on at the moment? Oh yeah, auto. Okay. It ain't doing a thing. And uh, just below that one, there is a, a APU bleed. Now that should be off. Should be off for the start, but I'm wondering if it's having error or something as it's not coming on. I'm trying to see what uh, anything I have. So. You know where we switched the power? Yeah, you... still not doing anything. Uh, try pulling down on the ground power switch, just to make sure. Uh, do you have fuel to start the APU, says Tom, but yeah. Right, pull down on the ground power switch, turn the APU back on. Yeah, our fuel's on. Sorry about that, engines. Try one of the other fuel pumps, just in case Ryan hears right. Okay, I'll turn uh, our fuel two on then. Some rather beepy noises going on. <laughs> yeah, I still can't start my APU. Oh. 
not doing anything. I just started yesterday. Rains, have you done? Uh, no, nothing. That is really odd. Turn it off again. Have Have you tried to take the electronics uh, on? I've just noticed something, Steve. Yeah. Um, where your DC, um, the the black switch where it says DC just above that. Able. Open that up and see if the battery button's switched on. Um, where that one? Yeah, battery no. uh, battery's on. See above those, um, you've got a TR one button and an APU gen button. The two like flick switches. Anywhere. Of that switch you were just checking out. You've got two, two um, knobs. circle switches. Yeah, yeah. Both on standby so, power. Yeah, if you click one to battery bus or bat bus. Yeah. And then the other one to GRD power, it will tell you if there's any volts coming through. DNAC. So you should have around 28 to 29. 29 DC volts. Out 115 settled on the AC. But yeah, it says 113. So there's no power issue there. That's... But it ain't starting. Uh, Level pressure's coming on and then it's not doing a thing. Um, just below those switches that Sam was talking about. Yeah. You've got stand down power and two disconnects. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just check the position of those three. Open the covers. Standby power's on auto. Um, disconnects are. Looks like they're in. Well, I can't even pull them down if I pull them down. Well, I can pull them up. So okay. they're, they're in the middle then. Yep, that should be right. Your player won't what start. Are you playing? <laughs> We've just reset the fort. Um, so I don't know why it isn't. I'm not getting anything when I turn the APU on. There's fuel coming through. Uh, fuel pumps are off. That should be the case, isn't it? Uh, you should have the two fuel pumps in the middle off and one of the four below them. Um, well, the only thing I've got in that row of four is the one on the left I've got aft on. Okay. Try to put one of the forward ones on. Anyone. Doesn't really matter. Um, what do we click on now? Come on. Okay, game. Why don't you let me click on them now? Try the fuel pumps. Yeah, that's just what we're trying to do. But if it let me actually click on anything, why don't we turn that one off now? Is that so I've got it on. Hang on, let's turn it back off. No, why don't we click on the fuel pumps? Uh, move your mouse around a little bit. The right button down. Yeah, Sometimes so I just done that. Right. Let's try putting one of the four ones on then. Not a thing. Is there anything on your switch panel that is you've changed since you loaded the plane? The external No, they're all off. Everything I haven't touched my switch panel at all. Okay. Uh, have a look on the hydraulic panel, which is just to the right of centre, about halfway down. There's four switches. Uh, yeah, two middle ones are up, two outer ones are down. Okay, that's perfect. Monty, I know, where was I? Where were those three little greeny blue lights? And that's one of those was on. When we did a test, was that down by the engines? Um, is that is that a thing? Um, oh, oh, is your yeah, fuel flicked up? 
yeah the little, when we did the test for the, the the engines the number the one to the right the number two engine i got one of those is actually on all the time ah oh, that's your yes. problem now how do we fix it because when, when i did the oh, test right. only two of the other lights were not that one stayed on oh okay no. that one is your apu the front oh. two and left and right in the back one's apu how did you already break? So is that fuel? So try that test again. See if the light goes. Well, they come on, and then that one stays on. The other two go off. That one stays on. Is there anything in this APU thing in the middle? APU well, bottle discharged or something? If you do that, it sets off the fire extinguisher, which could be a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I've just done that. <laughs> <laughs> just as you get all done. <laughs> Foam party. <laughs> <laughs> it, could, it could be a bit of mess out the back of the plane now. <laughs> what about if you switch your APU switch off and then try resetting it down at the bottom? Um, let's try that. APU off. Let's turn that fuel pump off and then go back down to the. I'll keep the bottom I can button. hear. Steve, your throttle's at zero because I can hear a buzzing noise that sounds like the throttle might not be at uh, idle. Yeah, they're already back at, all back at idle. And just below that, the two fuel switches, are they both down at cutoff? There's yes. a one and a two. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah, that test... Um, yeah, that sent the, the APU one stays on. Okay, somehow your plane has developed a fault in the APU, which we sh you should be able to fix with that fix and edit failures thing, but it's obviously not. Let's see if there's anything on the tablet that fix that. All systems done. Apply changes. Still on. Is it not that fix all systems? Is there not an option? Um, that's just for engines. Um, accessory. Oh, I to actually have failures in it. Someone's beeping. Yeah, that's the noise I was hearing. I thought it was yours that was doing that. That's the noise that you usually get if your throttles are advanced while on the ground. Yeah, that's not me. Just looking for anywhere where we can turn that off. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I just know he was forward. <laughs> right, power on. Let's be set. That's why it's starting because there's an issue with it. That's why that light's on, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. It could. Be, well, there is something on one of my panels that's put that on. I got the, uh, the APU working yesterday. What if I just do the um, whatever it was that it says in here? Uh, shift, Control, and E. Well, that's just start the APU. I'm not sure, to be honest. The APU fire distinguishes armed. Could be a problem. Um, let's try oh, is that was that discharged? Was the APU fire Clip test master caution off? Says Larwood. Has that light gone out now? No, the light's still on. Uh, let's try the shift control and E. Right, APU's just fired up. All oh, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll take that. We have fixed the problem for now. The light's gone off now. You know what's strange about that? My weather's actually just loaded in the second you said that, and I've not had weather on multiplayer for nearly three weeks. How weird yeah, is that? Well, we fixed two problems. Right, so yeah. APU's now on. Okay, back to the overhead panel. Yeah. If you look yeah. at the, the panel right above 
or like two slots above where the APU is, where the ground power switch is, is there a light in the blue light in the middle? Yes. APU generator. Yes. Right. As long as that blue light is on, you can click down on the two APU gen buttons right below it. Mine has gone out. Yep, it goes out the moment you click down on those. Oh, mine didn't. Try it again. So you should now have the two blue lights on the outside and no blue light on the inside once you've done that. Is your ground power on, Steve? Ground power's on. Because you've got no lights on your board. Get your ground power down. Mm. Put it down. There we go. I'm an APU gen on. Right, so pull down on the APU gen switch on the left and then on the one on the right. And nothing happens. It doesn't uh, change the displays to the side of it. No. Didn't that, there's still nothing showing in that dial. Um, the EGT dial. Okay, have a look at the display right in front of your throttle. Let's see if you've got anything on there. Nothing. I've got an alarm going off somewhere. Yeah, I have that too. APU is okay. definitely on because I can see the and hear it. Is the EGT dial showing anything? Nothing. Okay, you might be hearing your fuel pump then. Well, I can see. I can see out the back that there's um, the heat haze coming out of the back of the APU. Mm. Interesting. Okay, turn your APU off. Let's see what happens. Oh, it actually is, is set to off. Aha. Uh -huh. But it's running. Okay, then turn it on. <laughs> because you're outside, you can see the heat haze coming from the APU. And you can hear it. Right, click the switch to on and see if the EGT gauge comes alive. Uh, nope. Okay, push and hold start and see if it comes alive then. Yeah. battery or anything would he fuel pump yeah fuel pumps on loud but it's running I wonder if trying the fix all failures might be worth trying now if it's on if it's running yeah give it a go again yeah. it might be worth <laughs> oh, I've just done that <laughs> And nothing in that EGT gauge. But I've got an alarm going off somewhere. It's just weird you've got no lit panels on your overhead. Yeah, I just put ground power back on. And the alarm's gone off. Uh, that'd be why. If, if the ground power's disconnected, you've not got any power to anything. Check your tabs yep. if it's connected. Tablet. Ground services, GPU, no, GPU is connected. It's really bizarre. But I haven't got any low pressure on the, when I put the fuel pump on, um, I'm not getting anything, not getting any low pressure. Also, no lights on your overhead panel. Yeah, there's I'll nothing. That would suggest there's no power at all then. Um, now pull down on your ground power switch, see what happens. Steve, your GPU is not connected. The tablet. It's just. It's, no, it's a it's disconnect. Mindset. To disconnect it. Yeah. Um, yeah mine is I, connected. Yet, still. It says connected. No, it says disconnect. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Just, just click to the external view and see if it's on. You should see it outside. 
Yeah, it's outside. And the APU Hello. is running. I can see the heat haze. But where the plane Did doesn't think it's plane? running. Did you try turning on the ground power again? Yeah. And still no lights on the panel? No. no. Uh, yeah, I'm um, being the operative word. Let's try and see what else we could have. And are you in a Ryan airplane? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's you, boss Sam. But that isn't working because of because the APU's running. I can turn the APU off. Yeah, see if that helps. But I can still see that it's running. No, it, it will. It will. Um, it will show a heat haze for a couple of minutes after you've switched it off. Does it just discharge the rest the of the? off. Or try and start ground power again. Thinking, Chris. Um, in general config. So if you're going to customize, uh, configure and customize general config. Just over halfway down, there's an engine no run option that you can switch to turn around rather than cold and dark. I wonder if that will. Start yeah, I'm getting no lights on the panel. Yeah, the, yeah, um, the um, dash is all lit up. Yeah, but you ain't got any of the orange lights on, have you, all over no. the panel? You've all, got the all the displays, battery. all the displays are on on the dash, including the one in front of the throttles is now alive. That's probably the battery. I yeah. expect this. Yeah. Check your battery switch. See if that's on. It must be down. Um, where the hell is that? Second column, top panel, bottom left corner. Just below the... That's on. Things. Yeah, find a little cover in it. That's that on. on. That's on. And the, and the two dials, one's on battery bus and one's on ground power. Yeah. And they're both showing voltages. Yeah, tw 29, 113. Yeah, it's got roughly the same voltages as I've got. Looks like there's a dimmer switch for the panel that's turned down, says Larwood. Could be. Do you have APU panel on screens? It says Tuma. Don't know. Still, I can still hear them. What do you think? It's still running. Five screens in the center of the aircraft. Yeah, all five screens <coughs> in the center all lit up. Including the one down in front between the two FMCs is alive. Uh, was that light back on? Um, let me do a test on that. Me. Got to press the push to reset master caution or anything. That test isn't working anymore. To test the the, um, the the fire test and stuff, not working. Okay, if you look, go to the pilot seat, there's those two big square buttons in front of you, red and orange. Yeah. Are any, either of those red? Nope. Okay, push them just in case. Yeah, I just did that. I wonder if it's worth disconnecting ground power and then reconnecting it. What, from the panel? From the yeah. tablet? One page on the centre screen should be APU, maybe, says Tuma. It certainly looks like you've got no GPU coming in. Right, I've just reconnected. And then try that button. I've got to turn it on again. Yeah, I just turned ground power back on again. You can hear it clicking away behind me when it comes on. Um, it's just not lighting anything up on that. Over nothing's lit up. It should like give you alarms as well when you do that. Yeah, nothing. So it must uh, be a switch out of place that I haven't got. Because your two, uh, the two knobs above your battery switch, I got mine on standby power, both of those. 
Yeah, mine aren't. I swear, I'd move them because Sam was trying to check out. I want both to standby power then. Okay, try turning the right of those two knobs to APU gen and see what's, what uh, figure. Um, APU gen, everything reads, or well, DC volt still 29 on the left, but nothing on the right. Okay, so there's definitely nothing on that APU generator. Turn it back to standby power. Standby power. 117. 117. Yeah, the two switches right below that switch, are they both on? Yeah. But I'm getting nothing I'm from getting the, nothing. Uh, the oil pressure ones where we turn the fuel pump on. They're just all dark. Um. Okay, just below that panel where you select the voltages, try putting your standby power on battery. Um, okay, I don't think it goes to battery. Yeah. No, it, it just goes, goes to off. Battery. Yeah. Okay, and when you close the cover, it goes back on. Which is definitely odd. I would try that um, uh, what's on general your config right and then turn side, around. On your right hand side on the top panel, on the you've got APU bleed switched down. No, that should be up at this stage. Yeah, there we yeah you down. can turn that off now. We're just trying that. You can flick that one back off. No, it, right. it's, it's off now. Do with. <clears throat> Can't even it. It can be. I'd try. So if you go to your average tab, Steve. Um, optimize. Um, what's it? Figure and customize. Uh, yeah. And then general config. Yeah. And, and then engine. Six, engine yeah, no run. engine no run. If you can change that from cold dark to turn around, that might adjust everything. In. APU is still running from outside. That's the strange thing. Still got nothing lit up. Got no oil pressure lights or anything. That's really peculiar. Yes, I can't think of anything other than the ground power unit not providing any power to what it could potentially be. Um, okay, try this. Go into your settings and go to keyboard and then do a search for APU. Uh, okay, settings, keyboard. <laughs> APU. Yeah. APU generator off, APU generator on, APU off, APU on, APU start. GPU is disconnected, says Tuma. So no power is available. But it's not. Well, no, you connected it back up, didn't you? Yeah. It, well, it can still be connected to the plane, but you have to literally flick the switch on for the power to come through. Um... So that GRD power switch need to click down on it release the voltage through to the aircraft yeah I've done that battery switches on as well yeah keep it down for a few seconds see if that's still not lighting up is it no I'll just set a shortcut to fire up the APU let me just see if that works I don't remember what bloody it was oh shit No, so I'm getting nothing on that EGT. Do a shortcut for APU on as well. It's, it seems like it's turned off, but it's running, if that makes any sense. Uh, APU on. Uh, control shift Z. There we go. Done. Okay, let's try that out.
Nothing. I don't think it's a power. It's, it's definitely a power issue because there's nothing lit up, as Kale's saying. The bot. It's definitely to do with the GPU coming. What's through. your parking brake on, Steve? I know that's a silly question. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it is. Should be pulled towards sort of where you yeah. are. Yeah. Red light. The red light on. Yeah, there's no red light on. Um, that might be what it is. Then you need to pull that lever so it's away from the panel. Was it the B key? Is that a normal key? Right. I think so you just click on it with the mouse looking at it. Yeah, it's not holding in place. I don't see any oh, minus either holding in place. You no, you've, you've not got your feet on the pedals, so yeah. I, gonna... I haven't had, no. <laughs> if you touch touch the pedals, it will release, it can release the parking brake. It won't go yeah, back on now. It releases it uh, always. Mine is also released. You need that to be on. Yeah, it's a big orange light on. Yeah, it's not letting me click it's on it. Me... It springs well, I back. I started my uh, APU without the uh, parking brake on. Yeah, you could, the only time you can have the parking brake switched off is you've got the chocks set on. My chocks are on. So yeah, maybe that, turn APU turn is... the chocks off and see see if you can switch the parking brake on. APU is definitely running. Uh, set chocks. I see chocks were off. Right. Uh -huh. So see if you can pull that parking brake lever on. No, nope. it's just springing back. That's odd. That should just come straight on. Yeah, it, it does the same for me. It's just springing back. That's a bit weird. It's a bit odd. I think the panel light light up is just very dim. It does make a difference when you turn ground power off and on. Hmm. No, you definitely see the stuff I mean mine's not mine I even touched the dim controls on mine mine's all undim. Yeah I can't put the parking brake on. Yeah I played with it to turn mine off just to test it and I can't get it back on in mine either. Did you um right this might be something that I was having an issue with with my autopilot so <laughs> if you go into the configure and customize again and then bottom right you've got calibration everything on the left pitch null zone roll news null zone your null zone they all need to be at zero or it, it's a, it's actually registering something that would stop yeah, it from... it's exactly the same as mine so yeah, all at zero yeah i'm, I'm kind of lost with that this is really really odd that is weird yeah. beyond but none of us can put our parking brakes on once they're off I don't know, mine is on and off. Mine's mine. still on. So. I did a test flight right before the stream and mine worked perfectly well. It's weird. It's just not restarting X plane. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing lit up on this overhead panel apart from that display that's showing the amps and stuff. There's no lights on. Half the ground power, the blue light. Yeah, it's just that you've got no, it just seems there is no GPU going to your plane. Yeah, the GPU's out there. I'm trying to reload current aircraft on mine to see what happens. Oh, yeah, that might do something potentially. I hope it comes back with everything set. Well, that's, that was my fear, <laughs> is that we'd lose the last hour and a half's worth of uh, configuring <laughs> yeah, I can see the APU running I can see the heat haze it's, it's, it's not your APU what was that left of the parking brake in that last view says Larwood it's the GPU that was a speed brake I think that's a speed brake and that's the um, trim there's yep. a dial twitching up and down looked like altitude or something Uh, we are you can't apply your brake <laughs> yeah mm. 
I yeah. think the lane is broken. Let's try resetting the um, um, edit failures again. Fix all systems. Apply changes. No. Not let me apply. No, them. My plane came back cold and dark. Got to hold down tow brakes, says Harry. That will release the parking brake. Yeah, that's, that releases them. Now look, I won't be going anywhere near that when the tow brakes are on. Yeah, next to the artificial horizon, something twitching. If I've hold down the tow brakes, has to release them. So if I've got the tow brakes held, I can't even click on that. Thanks for the input and the idea. <laughs> You're desperate with training. <laughs> I've got nothing lit up above on that overhead panel. I can hear the fuel pump come on. When I click it, there's got to be something power-wise. Standby power. Let me just go through this. Standby power is on auto. Disconnect. The covers are down. Um, tell a couple of passengers to go down and hold the wheels. Yeah. That <laughs> um, is really bizarre. I think I've got passengers in here as well. Uh, oh, they're not showing. No, the, the, I had passengers turned on earlier on because they'd have been getting really impatient by now. Like I should have been in Alicante. Oh, I should have been in Dublin by now. Wherever the hell we're going. Should <laughs> have been in Alicante by now. Yeah. <laughs> um. This right DC power is on. Click on battery, everything everything goes off. If I then click on turn turn the ground power off. Whole thing I hear everything click back in again, I turn ground power back on. DC power's on, the lights come up. In that display at the top, so that's all working. Two little dials say that's on standby power, and that's on standby power. Should that not be on ground power? Well, mine's both on standby power. Right, so that's yeah, fine. Yeah, they'll just sort yeah, of tell you what, you what you've got coming through electrical-wise. It doesn't actually adjust anything other okay. than just display. Press the tow brakes and pull the parking brake. Yeah, it doesn't work. Just, just tried that. Um, I don't know what else it can be. Well, turn your aft fuel pump back off. I'm not getting any displays lit up though. The low oil pressure displays, nothing. Yeah, because you've got no GPU. You've got no ground power coming in. We try on just ground services. GPU disconnect. So that's now disconnected. Set the shocks. GPU connect. Um, uh, that's off. Yeah, that's it. That's better. So that's on. So GPU's on. So G yeah. that should be on now. You've just got to switch it. You've just got to flick the switch down to acknowledge the power from it. The switch below the blue light. Yeah, we've just done. I hear it all clicking away behind me. And nothing lights up. So there's something minor here. I either have clicked that I shouldn't have done or haven't clicked that I should have done. Uh, yeah, well, we would have found it by now, surely. Um, they're fine, that's fine. Standby power is definitely on auto. The two red ones we disconnect on. Um, I'm guessing I haven't even touched them, so they can't have done anything. Is the battery on? We we're on ground power. And ground power's connected. Um, 29 DC volts, 117 AC volts coming in. Um, but I don't know what else it can be. But I'm getting yeah, no. Pretty much the same readout on power ampage that I got, so it can't really. But be. it's these fuel pressure thingies, I'm getting none of that. Nothing to lit got up. No lights on in the other panel. You should have lights on your hydro pumps. You should have it on the window heat. Yeah, nothing. You've got no lights. It's just like there's no power going to there. 
at all. But there is, because down here, everything's lit up like a Christmas tree. So we've got power coming in. But not that's doing any good to the systems. Over the two red flips, you see a little one open. It switches battery on. Yeah, it's on. Oh, your displays have gone off, haven't they? I've just looked. I've just noticed. You've got no displays. No nav displays or anything. They've switched off. No, they're on. No, but your um, IRS is reset, so you should have a you should have a map up on it. But everything's gone off. It looks. See the screens oh, are yeah. all black. Yes. Be full of colour. Yeah, they haven't got any something, horizons yeah, something or anything. The kit for some. I'm not sure how. But it's killed the circuit for some reason. That APU is still bloody running. Is the overhead panel dimmed? Yeah, Lyle was saying something about that. Is there a dimmer switch for the overhead panel? Is that in it? Yeah, it yeah it's in the middle of near the yeah, top. Yeah, I've got it now. Yeah, That's just the backgrounds. Yeah, well, you, yeah. you see it. There you should be lights on everywhere else, really. Um, yeah, it's all lighting up, so at night I'll be able to see it. Lovely. But the actual things in the panels aren't working I can call an attendant can you come and help me start this plane <laughs> so I don't know uh, okay, no I can't think of anything else all your switches are exactly the same as mine so I'd, I it's got to be a power thing from the outside I think but ground power is definitely down what's, what's this bus transfer there's nothing in there I've got have, have a look behind the pilot seat there's a there's a panel there doesn't seem to actually do anything but I'll just flick the, the bus thingy down and that all goes off doesn't it do I flick ground power down again um, sorry behind the what where Mind the pilot suit, the fuses. Some yeah. of the fuses light up. Um, they all look dark. Yeah, there's nothing you can switch on those anyway. Some of them I can actually switch, or not switch, but the pointer changes to a hand. Um, it's bizarre. We had these were running earlier on until I fiddle around with. What it looks like's happened. Looking at the displays before your APU has kicked in, uh, the power has been lost, which is why the displays have dropped as well. Yeah. Um, but it's just odd that you can't reset, or connect to the ground power again. Maybe they can't strike. Ground services, <laughs> GPU disconnect, <laughs> and GPU connect. So. GPU's connected. I'll turn ground power on. Everything, all the background lights of all the overhead panel light up, lovely. But the actual system's lights don't. No. I've tried resetting uh, faults. So it's not a fault, technically. I just don't know. It won't start. Anyone got a manual for a 737 handy? You shouldn't affect that fire extinguisher, Rob. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it sounds right. There's nothing on these displays. So it is that the whole thing's reset. The FMC's gone blank as well. Um, and these tests don't work for the fire tests and stuff. They're not working. So it is, I've got no, although I have got power coming in, I haven't got power coming in. It's probably your battery power it's running off of. Yeah, but should, battery should be, standby power is off. G 
GP ground power is definitely on. There's, There's a... nothing down the fire panel you need to reset, is there? Now, if you set something off on your fire panel, it's uh, into the hangar with it. Yeah. I'm wondering if that might be it, if that's been caught. If I reload the aircraft, I'm going to lose everything in the FMC. But the, the, the um, APU is running. Yeah, that's what's strange. It's like it's it's been stuck on. Actual fire in there, and it's just the smouldering. <laughs> oh, no, you, can, <laughs> you can see the haze coming from it. Yeah, it's definitely on. I can see that. Mine's, mine's doing that, but then my APU is switched on. Yeah. So it's something's definitely stuck I mean we can I'm happy to go through the process of setting up again it shouldn't take too long if you wanted to reload all the facts and figures to go straight through it again I just think that this engine start auto auto there's nothing down the bottom here is there APU is off now. Turn that fuel pump off. Yeah, I definitely don't know. It is definitely yeah, none, of the, none of the circuit breakers for the APU are switchable. I think it's going to be an aircraft reload from the sound of it. Or swap it, an emergency aircraft. I've tried doing the you know, get rid of all the fail um, uh, issues thing. Maybe it won't work on the mod plane. None of you guys have got no issues, have you? Nope. Well, I didn't until I reloaded my plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to do with that flicking stuff on my side tech panel just to see if any of that, any of that might brought something into life. I'm going to have to do a reload, aren't I? Yeah, we'll get it set up again. Uh, well, I have started my engines. Started your engines on the stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think someone has something to say about that, probably. Yeah. Or maybe if we don't turn. don't program the FMC, let's just get the engine started, and at least get to that point. I mean, you can follow us. You could navigate via the autopilot panel anyway yeah, I could if you do wanted that. to. Yeah. Just just do heading and stuff. You could just follow your. Um, I think I can just have to load the route, you don't need a departure and arrival. Yeah, yeah, you can just load the route. Which you've already got saved in anyway. Him. Yeah. Okay. And we can do the, the cheat version of setting up the uh, power reduction it takes two seconds. Okay, let's do that. Um, I'm just reloading the aircraft anyway. No <laughs> idea what that was. I've obviously clicked something or haven't clicked something, it would seem. Lesson is, ladies and gentlemen, don't ever fly with Ryanair. <laughs> they always break flip. down. Other, <laughs> other liveries are available for the aircraft. I have to get Sims and stuff one done now. There's a DC switch over the left, red, uh, red disconnect switch, maybe off. Well, I'm reloading the aircraft uh, eventually once I get rid of the spinning circle of doom from X plane. It took about ten minutes to load X plane earlier on as well. Right, I want to switch my APU off and come back onto ground power, I think. Right, there we go. We have reloaded. I have no APU no running. APU run. Okay, you want to go through the startup sequence very quick. Okay. Right, overhead panel, second column, uh, DC power, I close can, the door. I can hear a really loud rumbling. Yeah, it'll be the APU slowing down. Okay. Sorry, what was that? Um, 
second have a down on the second column. Yeah. Uh, yeah. DC switch close the guard should turn over. Um, oh, that one. Okay. We have lights. Right below that, check the standby power on the two disconnect switches. No, closed. Closed. Yeah. Closed. Yeah. Below that, the bus transfer should be closed. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a light above where it says ground power off? Yes. Okay. Click down on that button. All lights have stayed on. That one stayed on above that one, but the two down, the two lights below that now have come on. Okay. Perfect. Right up to the very, very top panel. Um, which I've got saved here on a button somewhere. There, yep. Yeah. Turn the left of those two dials to now. Then wait for it to come up with a line. Yep. Done. And the other one to nav. You got it. Everything else on that panel guys, should be default. I'm going to uh, run into the terminal to the little boy's room. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, down to your FMC. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, go to. Oh, I can't remember where it is. Should be on the initial uh, initialization page already. Um, I've pressed initial. What? Well, what to load the plan in? Uh, well, to uh, get the initial position. Yeah, the init ref. Uh, what's it? What page is it on? Uh, uh, one of three. Uh, pause in at one of three. Yeah. Okay, EGNX top left. GNX. Yeah. Uh, uh, gate 11, I think you were. Yeah, 11. Yeah. Yeah. Next page, pick up a GPS signal. Yeah. Then go back up and plop it into the open space. Yeah. Right, you're now initializing. Then you can go to root. Yeah. You should already have EGNX in the bottom left, so just click into the top left. Yeah. Uh, EIDW top right. Yep. Type in EGNX EIDW zero one and click next to co root. X E I D W zero one. Yep. Activate. Activate and then go to legs, make sure it's all there. Yep. Okay, then you should be able to go to Perth in it. Where the hell is that? Should be bottom right of the root screen. Or you can go. Oh, yeah, got it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, click the top left button. Yep. Yeah. Zero in reserves. Uh, yeah, cost index was cost index seventeen. 17. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Two eight zero in cruising altitude. Yeah. Okay, we don't need to worry about all of those cruise winds and stuff. Just push it. Okay. Click N1 limit, bottom right. Yeah, it's 24, Tw isn't it? 24. Oh, yeah, we're going to derate with outside air temperature. I think it was 8. You've got, you got to use slash 8. Remember that. Yeah. Slash 8. Oh, yeah. 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 Then you can derate 24. Then go take off. Yeah. Five into flaps. Yep. Click next to CG. 
Yeah, that's already inverted. Right. Make sure your trim wheel is on about 4.79, which mine is. Or whatever it says. Um, yeah, it's about 5, yep. Yeah. Okay, could be 1 VRV2. Yeah. And we're done. Okay, now I've got to start the flipping thing again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch any. I'm not touching anything there. else. Don't press the big right. Let's go to the overhead panel again. Yeah. Right, top left, your damper on. Uh, yes. No. Right. No. Hang on. Yes, <clears> the light's gone out. Okay, below, the, below that, all of those switches and dials should all be exactly where they should be. Normal, 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 auto. Auto, yeah. Right, uh, aft one fuel pump. On. Low pressure lights uh, gone out. pressure lights gone out. Okay, APU first switch on. Low oil pressure's come on. Right, and then hold start for three seconds. Right. And we've got a moving dial. Hey! <laughs> right. Now we've got to looking. wait for the blue light in the middle. What, the one above ground power? Uh, the one below that. Below the bus oh, that one's come on. Okay. Is, yeah, once that's on, the APU is full. Wow. Oh, ah. I have a working APU, Sam. He's nice. still in the pilot lounge. Oh, he's <laughs> <it's> probably <laughs> gone to the bar. Okay, mine's just come on. Yep, mine's on. Right, turn on the left APU gen button, and you should see the button lights to the right should change. Light. Uh, yeah, lots of things changed. Lots of things came on. You should see source off. Yeah. It's lit up to the right. Yeah. Okay, turn on the right one and that should now go out. So now you should be left with blue lights on the outside and uh, the ground power blue light. All right, source off still on above the left one. Okay, then pull the left one down. All right, that's gone off. Okay. Then you can it's flip the left one again, power. Steve. The left one again, because you still got an orange light. Yeah, I've just done that, Sam. So, sorry, mate. Street, stream delay, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I was getting my complimentary drinks that you're paying for because of the delay. Uh, sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually bought the extra fuel. <laughs> I, I can give you a jelly, baby. <laughs> That'll do. I'll take it. Yeah. Right, now you can turn your ground power off. Okay. And the plane shouldn't complain when you do so. In which case of flick up, does that light go off or not? No. Okay. Now back to the pilot seat to your tablet. Yep. Okay, ground services, GPU disconnect. Okay. okay. Right, back to the overhead panel, and then I need to find my place in the checklist. <laughs> After about <laughs> half an hour delay. <laughs> It's going to be a rather long YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> nearly at two hours now. Well, if you managed to edit, you could have edited that bit out. I could have edited the failure out. I you know, might actually... Nah, no, I won't do that. <laughs> the, the well, well, actually, perhaps I'm, I, might not, I might not put this on YouTube. Um, I might, if we do it again, um, record it again for YouTube. Because it'll be, it'll, bits of it will make more sense then. <laughs> Bits of it. Well, maybe we can do okay. it by the end of the week Back or something. The yeah. panel. And now I'm going through the middle section of the panel. Okay. Right, right underneath where it says uh, lavatory, you've got equipment, cooling, supply, exhaust, but it should be on. Uh, over there? About halfway down the panel. Right in the middle. Oh, equipment, cooling, supply, exhaust, all normal, yeah. Okay, emergency lights, close the cover, which will on. Yep. 
Okay, fasten seat bolts on. Definitely, always advisable. Yeah. <laughs> Although, if you're still in Ryanair, do you have seat bolts? <laughs> you have to pay Brilliant. extra for seat belts, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And there's a tax on that. <laughs> yeah. You, you, do you <laughs> want to feel tax. safe in this Ryanair flight? Yeah. If they could get away with having you stand, I think they would. Yeah, they Activate. did actually look into that in real life, but they weren't allowed. They wouldn't give them oh, any really? sort of. It was a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Sitaro's just said, actually, have you turned the plane on yet? It's probably the best question. No, we're still on APU power. We haven't got engines running yet. Okay, windshield wipers should both be on park. Yeah. Okay, next column, the right at the very top. Okay. Okay, okay. okay the window heat there's 5 switches. Five switches. Okay. You need the middle one downwards to test power and upwards to test overheat. Yep. Green lights, red lights, yep. Okay, now you need to switch all of those other four switches on so you get four on one. Yeah, Sitara, it's taken two hours so far and we haven't started the engines yet. <laughs> there was a half an hour bit where I killed the plane. We didn't yeah. say how long it was going to take, we just said we were going to start the 737. Yeah, flying to, to Dublin, <laughs> not, not sure if we're going to get time to do that. Um, go on. Okay, below that, your anti ISIS must sort of stay off. Yeah. Right, below that, engine one and two hydraulics must be on, and electric one and two hydraulics off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, last column. The air temperature source you don't need to worry about. We use it forward, that's fine. Trim air you need to turn. Okay. Below that, recirculating fans must be on auto. Yeah. yeah. Air conditioning packs on auto. Yeah. Yeah. Um, isolation valve must be open, which should be the default. Yeah. Yeah. APU bleed, we're now going to turn on. Okay, I've got a little red light coming up on top there now. And you should hear the fan. Yep. So. Right, below that, you've got uh, two altitudes. There's flight altitude and landing altitude. Flight altitude, you need to set to 28,000. Look, mine is low. How come mine's not lit up then? Is it panel dimmed? Uh, yeah, that'll go down if the panel's dimmed. Ah, yeah, sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> this should definitely go on YouTube, said Staro. What, uh, probably a three hour video on how to start a, a 737. So 28,000. Yeah, and landing and altitude. And how to land it. And land altitude should be on. Okay, your land altitude is 200 feet. Uh, I did post a chart of the airport, and it's 201 we feet. We didn't so read charts. No, we just looked at the pit. <laughs> if, I, if I see Ireland, I'll be quite happy. <laughs> if I see a runway, I'll be quite happy. <laughs> that bugger is a tutorial. What, how not to start a 737. Actually, no, it's been... It's, people could follow it, I suppose. Yeah. Did to garden a bit where I could restart the plane. To the right of landing altitude, your switch must be set on auto. Yeah, entitled How Not to Start the 738, says Sitaro. Yes, thank you, Sitaro. Okay, landing and runway lights should all be off. That's bottom left of the panel. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the middle of the panel, your engine start switches should be both be on auto. Yep. And on the right hand side, your position and strobe should be the only one that's left on now. Your wing yeah. and your wheel well, you can probably turn off. I don't think yours will be on. Yeah, mine are off. Okay. Right. Now we get to the fun. Push back. Bar? Flight, uh. flight directors on. <laughs> left first and then right. Oh. We oh. did do this once, but yours will probably be off, Steve. Yeah. Flight director. Yeah on yeah okay check the settings in your um, on the display your speed I think was 147 
heading 269, altitude 28. Yeah, I'll speed drop back down, but I can change that now. 147, yep. Description, this is how the elder generation tries to fly planes. Will you be safe oh. taking this flight? Yes, as you won't actually leave the ground. Thank you, Sitaro. <laughs> I mean, right. older generation. Chaos, yeah. And what? Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I mean, you can take the ferry to Dublin, uh, uh, but when you're going over the uh, Irish Sea, you will die. It'd probably be quicker Wait. actually to take the ferry. Drive, drive <laughs> yeah, from no. East, East Midlands to Wales, get on a ferry, drive the other side, drive to Dublin, be quicker than us <laughs> flying there. I think it's about 13 hours, yeah, so it should be quicker. Yeah. Right. Go on, go on, Chris. Okay, right. On the panel to the left of the autopilot controls, yeah. you're going to want to change, well, you probably set the mins, should be on radio. No, what, what, what? There's a dial called RST. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, that should be the outer side of that thing should be pointing to radio and then turn the dial on the middle. So on your primary display, it reads 200, which is your decision altitude, also from the chart. Huh? That'll then just give you a shout out when you reach 200 feet above the runway. Where does that show 200 feet then? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to that out below the primary flight display. Once you change that dial, it should say radio and a number. The number is controlled by the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Look on your artificial horizon. Yeah. Just below that, does it say oh, radio yeah. and a number? Yeah. That needs to be on 200, yeah? Yep. Okay. Artificial horizon? Yeah, the, the first big panel to your left, just in front of your yoke. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. In front of your turn, yoke. Turn the RSD in the dial. And it'll change that. Uh, if it's not set, it won't appear. That's definitely on radio. I can't see the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, I can't see what it's, where it, what it's changing on where. On that primary flight. flight ah, radio. Flight Hang on, I got it. You got it. Alright, tweet it way around. It's 200 now. It's going to take a while. Could have walked there by now, says uh, Larwood. Well, you couldn't have done Larwood. <laughs> Actually, no, you probably could have done from Perth. Wow, he's really after you now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Cause you know we have to forget all this by later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to make a video of this all thing. Just have. Just have. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Radio is two hundred. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The opposite dial to that one is Barrow. Yeah. Which is our HPA yeah. and either twenty nine ninety two or one zero one three. Twenty nine ninety two. Uh, yeah. We could pick that up, but mine actually says standard pressure. Um, okay, what next? Uh, VORs we don't have to worry about, of course. The mode selector should have been on map already, the CTR. Yeah. And I think that's it for that panel. Okay, just below that panel is a little autopilot panel with three lights and a test switch. Flick the switch up to test, and you should get three orange lights. And down to test, you should get two reds that are orange. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, right in the very middle of the console, just below with the IS Mac display, you've got an anti skid. Uh, anti skid yeah, is off. Okay, turn it to RTO. And the little light comes on and goes off. Yep. Right. Okay, the two dials to the left of those should both be on auto. Yep. The little switch below that fuel flow, click it up so it's reset. 
Should go back down to right. Yeah. Okay. Then on the center console below the throttles, the very last thing on the middle uh, part of that panel is your uh, transponder that needs to be on standby, which is the default. <coughs> Where the hell do you see that? Uh, look below the, the throttles. Right. Keep going right. backwards. ATC one and then two thousand. Yeah, it's on standby. Yeah, it's on standby. Cool. Right, almost there, chaps. Back to your tablet, uh, ground services, and clear the chop. Clear chops. Uh, mine were cleared anyway. Okay, on the uh, autopilot panel, just to the right of the course display, there's auto throttle on it. Oh, we can do that on my thingy. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Flick my switch. Oh, uh, oh, there you go, coffee. Me, me throttle oh, gate. My throttle has just gone forward. forward. <laughs> yeah, uh, mine is take off config alarm. Yeah, my throttle just went yeah, forward as well. Right, back up to the overhead off panel. Get, if it's affecting your throttles, you can actually switch that off until you're at the threshold for the runway. It's taxi I was like someone's as advanced. You have to yeah, back up to the overhead panel and turn on your fuel pumps. Uh, all of them? Um, I don't think you've got fuel in your centre tank, do you? If not, no. just the bottom ones. Steve and myself probably will have to turn on the all of them. Yeah, I just got the bottom ones on. I'll, I'll turn all of them. Okay, and on the right of that, the third, well, actually the second column from the right, the hydraulic uh, panel, you want the ELEC 1B turned on. On. What? Yeah, I was just about to say exactly that, Moz. <laughs> Your hydraulic panel. So, below where your window heat and probe heats are. There's a panel for hydraulic pumps. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got it. Second one from the right needs to go on. Well, uh, only that one? Just that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there should I be two wearing. others that are on already. Yeah, one remains off. Good. Okay, at the very bottom of the panel, anti collision lights on. Oh. And no return now. Oh god, I'm getting, I'm getting scared. Okay, now so Steve, because we both reset, <laughs> yeah. we're going to want to check, configure and customise hardware and nose wheel access, make sure it's on your... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hardware... your, okay. Okay, now also on the uh, panel, Need to go home, ground services, better push back if you've got it in the school. Yeah. Yeah. And pre plan. I have already pre planned. <laughs> it's probably all crushing these. <laughs> yeah, which way is the runway? Is it to the. We need to reverse and reverse to the right, so we're going to be heading left. Okay. All right, so if he says. Oh, there. God, he's not, I'm God. going to. I've got to be reversing behind chaos. This isn't going to go wrong at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, request pushback and follow the prompts. Turn off the parking brake when he tells you. Ground to cockpit. Plan okay, acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Request pushback, please. Yeah. I have done that. Cockpit. Toe is driving up. Come on. Toe's driving up. Ground to cockpit. <laughs> Toe is driving up. Go outside. We can actually see him drive into the building in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> mine is too. That is actually, so wrong. I've got the UK 2000 seater, and he's literally driving exactly on the road, which I'm very surprised about. 
to add on scenery, everything just goes everywhere, but... <coughs> he's disappeared. He's, he's gone in for a smoke or something. Oh, no, here he comes. Out of the building. I did this earlier on at uh, Kemble when I jumped in the plane. That's as far as I got. That was quite cool, actually, the way it does this. Is If you look closely as well, you can actually see the front landing gear lift up. Yeah. Onto the... Uh... Very cool. And again, free. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. And back he comes. So who's going back first? Uh, who knows? <laughs> In theory, it should be <laughs> Noz. Well, I'm putting my route in store, sir. Go ahead. That doesn't really matter, does it? We can all wait at the holding point. Oh, I may start an engine. So connected and bypass brake. pin inserted. Release parking brake. Release parking brake. Oh, we'll start engines. Uh. <laughs> Starting pushback, and you may start engines. You, yeah, you say you may start engines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just thought of it. Yes. <laughs> I've been pushed back. <laughs> yeah, I am too. Oh, I can okay, see you push back. Let us know when you're all pushed back and we'll do the engine start quick. Very soon. Let's watch this from the outside. He's going to push you back to where oh, I, I wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, chaos is back. He got a very long. Oh, it's because I didn't turn off the um, display park vehicles the second time I loaded in. Oh. So there's Chaos. Um, God, I mean, Chaos is going to collide with each other. Watch my plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there may have been a bit of a collision there, Chaos. Wait, get away. <laughs> <laughs> get away from my plane. <laughs> Isn't why I, it's why I chose to go back a bit further. So I know what you're like. <laughs> okay, I'm starting engine number two. Oh, good for you. <laughs> right, so he's pushing me back. <laughs> it's just a mass free for us. It's quite amusing. I, I'm surprised. I, I don't think they actually operate like this in the airport. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think they Operation do. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Set parking brake. Okay. You reckon that's the thing I can do, is it? I, I can't remember. I can't even find a view to get to the parking brake. Let alone set it. Right, parking brake's on. Okay. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Right, so now the procedure for starting the engine before you actually do it is you select... Sorry, that was just the ground crew talking to me. Um, you will turn <coughs> your engine to start switch to ground. You'll then look at the display between the two FMCs, and when the right hand engine spools up to 25, you'll lift the cutoff lever number two up top. Operation. Fairly straightforward. Oh, I can hear it. I can hear something rumbling. May um, start the 20%. Should actually have turned off the aircon packs for this, but anyway. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. When it gets to what number? 25. I cannot get it over 15. What am I doing wrong? If you lift the lever too high, it will, um, too fast, it will flood the engine and will catch fire. Fun. Well, it can it cannot go over fifteen. Okay, turn your air contacts off then. That's on the overhead panel on the right hand side. Hand signal on the right. Time and have a safe flight. Starting up engine one. Also, Nels, have you got your fuel pumps on? Yeah, I 
do know you're out in front, Steve, so you... That's slightly concerning. Nope, nope, not over 15 at all. Right, I've got about 10 minutes left. Bridge packs off, uh, Noz. If you go to your overhead panel, <clears throat> on the right-hand side, about midway up, you've got a light grey panel. Uh, the top of that, there's two blue lights, and it'll say left research, fan and right research. Below that, you've got an L pack and an R pack. Switch them from auto to off. Back, back. Right, mine have that'll give you increased some more air. Stable out at 409 and 20.1-ish. Okay. Oh yeah, that's what. Thank yep. you. Okay, so now your engine should all be started. Yeah. Back to the air panel and turn on the remaining hydraulic. Okay. The APU's still on, isn't it? Yeah, we're getting there. Okay. Okay, so that panel with the generators has got two blue lights on the left near the bottom. Yeah. Uh, bus transfer. You need to pull down both of the switches for engine one and engine two. Those okay. blue lights should go out and the APU blue lights should come on. Two outer ones, yeah. Yeah, admit the one middle one's come on now. Okay, then top of the panel towards the right, your two probes, you need to turn those on. Probes? Uh, under the window heat, you've got probe A and probe B. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and those lights go out. Okay, on the right hand side of the panel, if you turned your air compacts off, Put them onto auto. I didn't, so. Okay, between those two, there's an isolation valve. Turn that to auto. Uh, yeah. Where is that? Sorry? The A bit below the dial. Bit oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, at the bottom of that panel, turn the APU bleed off. And your engine bleeds on to either side of that should both be on by. I still got a source off light on the APU bus transfer panel. Um, source off. Pull down the the outer two levers again. See. All right, APU bleeds off. That light's gone off now. APU still showing us on. Right, that's our next step. Uh, APU off. And the bus transfer panel should have no lights on at all now. Correct. Yeah, down. I still can't mine on. One on the right hand side on generator two, I still got blue light and source off, even though I'm playing the switch. Is your right hand engine definitely on? Check on the mm. um, center of the five display. Uh, yeah, they're both running at 64.8%. Okay. Try turning the side that's off, that's blue off, and then on again. Nope. Any luck? Nope. Okay, now Chaos has broken his plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We're doing well, aren't we? Well, I have not managed to break mine yet. Oh, I showed an engine spool yeah, down. Right. That was not me. Nope. Yeah, no, it's not doing nothing. If you've you got this far and you're, you're watching this on YouTube, uh, it's my first time starting at this. Um, none of us have got, apart from Chris and Sam, have um, got this far. So it has taken a lot longer than it should do. Um, but uh, yeah, we've gone through it step by step. There's someone else at the airport Someone. now as well, called City Light. City Light. Chaos, is your APU still on? Uh, no, APU is off. Okay, turn it back on again. Switch it on and then hold the stop for three seconds. Uh, 
uh, getting pressure of things getting on the EGT. Okay, now wait for the blue light in the middle. Yeah. One thing I will do, go back to that. Um, there's things you can do here, right, can't we? We can make an announcement. Um, but it's yeah, still on. Is the light on? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the AP. Uh, yeah. uh, no. Uh, plus, I've got a, on the standby power, I've got drive on number two. Yeah. Okay, and let's ignore that for the time being. We'll, we need the blue light above APU, Gent. Yeah, that's still on, and I got source off above it. In okay, pull the both the APU Gent. <sighs> Oh, I think the plane's just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Or has it? Oh, my power's gone out. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I think uh, you basically got the same problem Steve had. You have to reset um, the plane then. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have time for that because I need to make spuds. <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> well, we, we'll do another leg. We'll do, we'll do it again in the week then. Um, we'll set up a flight in the um, in the states or something where it's going to be daylight, and we'll do it again uh, one evening in the week. We should be all be a bit quicker at setting it up then. So we can yeah, I might have a little practice tonight and just see if I can. Uh, yeah, I will definitely practice yeah. a lot. Okay, so you're staying there then, Chaos? Are you? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to shoot now, mate, because I need to go in there. Okay, that fight. Uh, no problem. Right. Okay, Steve, you're going to need to check that your flaps are on five. Um, let me just try to get the right view. Right, I'll catch up with you guys a bit later, all right? Yeah, take it easy. Cheers, Chaos. Cheers, Thanks for that. Chaos. Cheers, Chaos. See you in a bit, mate. Um, two. Flaps are on five. Okay, taxi lights on. Yep. Yeah. Mine has been on a long time. Okay, release the parking brake and let's taxi. Oh my god. Right, well Sam knows the airport. So do you want to... Yeah, I can lead the way. We're rolling people. We are moving under engine power. It's taken 2 hours and 19 minutes. Don't really want to go above thirty-five percent when you're uh, spooling the engines up to taxi, okay. and you don't really want to go above twenty-five knots. Although Ryanair taxi at around sixty knots, I wouldn't advise it. That's pretty quick. When you're making a turn as well, you want to be turning at around fifteen to eighteen knots, just so you don't sort of skid. Okay. Give the passengers a crappy ride. Well, Shin Chaos, I think if we'd have, uh, well, if I didn't have my issues, we'd have probably been, uh, and we'd have been a bit quicker at starting up. We'd have probably managed the flight by now. So I will follow Sam. We'll get used to not using, we we'll get used to not using truck right IR. So this is the Romeo intersection, and you'll be turning right onto the Alpha taxiway, which will take you down the side of the runway. We are moving. It's a shame track IR won't work as well as having the views. I'm just going to have to quickly reset my FS Cloud because it's uh, doing what he does best. Alright, so there's Chris. I'll wait for him to go past. Why can I not turn this plane at all with my rudder panel? 
because you've got to go into the um, the panel with into configuration settings and change it. What? In where? Go, go into your, your the tablet. Yeah. Configurations and settings. Yeah. And I can't remember which one it is after that. Yeah, hardware. Yeah. And there's one there that's. Um, hang on, let me try and have a look. Uh, configurations and settings, uh, hardware, and click nose wheel axis. Yeah. To your YAW. Okay. Dang. So you can hear the uh, emergency announcement going off in the background. I do not understand why I could not <laughs> steal the plane at all. Well, I'm right behind uh, you, Steve. I, I will say one thing. Spooling this thing up doesn't sound as nice as a prop. You will get used to that's, it. That's because you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> if it was a 757 or your 737-200, you'd probably say something different, especially the 737, because that makes a ridiculous noise when you start it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, flying that. I said, I, I, I want to do jets. I want to do more in jets, because your know, props are relatively simple to, uh, to start up. So this whole process, I will want to do more of it. Um, that's for sure, because certainly with the legs we're doing, going down to the Ascension Islands, this is the only way we're going to get there. And this plane, um, quality-wise, is absolutely stunning for something that's free. Yeah, it's really, really, really good when you're learning it to start it up and learn the FMC. Really good. So yeah, my little nav map's playing up now, so I can't actually see anyone. I can see you on uh, FS Cloud, but I can't see. No, you disappeared. Um, I've updated little nav map, and all of a sudden now FS Cloud's decided it, yeah, it doesn't like. Yeah, I, map I didn't do the update. Well, I have updated it, and I have no problem with uh, FS Cloud. Well, 2.24 on the go and it's yeah just I can't see you on field. FS Cloud either Sam no I can see all you guys but it's just really not <gasps> from, I'm guessing you're at the end of the runway yeah I'm waiting at the holding point but I can't see all right, you Noz is behind me Noz's and behind me. just crashed into me thanks Noz <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I just realised that you're all breaking well I cannot see you because you're in the small plane of course yeah he thinks you're in Cessnas. Uh, yeah, that's more. Uh, Let me just creep need, forward a bit then. I Is need it? to really work that out. By you uh, might want to just uninstall and reinstall FS Cloud. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna have a look at that. Because because uh, great is that it's not changing automatically. Name, you're in. All right, Chris is moving you forward. Does that? Okay, so do you want to talk us through your takeoff run? Yeah, I can do. I'm just going to. Uh... While we're waiting, we should turn our transponders to the maximum. Uh, How do you do that? And turn the landing lights on and taxi light off. <coughs> right, taxi light off, landing lights on both sides. Then we can. Put our position lights to strobe and steady, and anti-collision lights on. Anti-collision light is already on. What do you say with the transponder? It's done. No, stop driving into me. Driving at all? You are. I got my brakes on. You're you're rolling forward. I have my parking brake on. Well, it's not doing a very good job of it. Okay, I can't be asked with FS Cloud anymore because it's really starting to get on my nerves. So I'm just <coughs> actually freezing my X plane now. 
this would be where X plane crashes for me. So we've all had. No, so, I'll say that I've been given clearance for the runway, so I'm going to flick the landing lights on. Noz drives a plane just like a truck, says Chaos. Exactly. Yeah, he just crashes into people. <laughs> what shall be the, the transponder be? I wouldn't worry about it, Chaos. Uh, Noz. This is where I'm just used to just barreling up the end of the runway and just whacking the throttles up and going. So, <laughs> it's not frozen anymore. I'm going to make my way onto the runway. I'm just going to check a few things so you can cross check the top just to check that you've got everything set. So, you've got your. Um, Speed set 147, headings 269, and altitude is 28,000. You can also now yeah. call on if you've not put it on your auto throttle to arm. That would just you whack the throttles up, though, wouldn't it? No. It shouldn't do. Over it them once you do. get into the air. Yeah, it did with um, us because it's trying, to, it's trying to get the plane to that speed, isn't it? Should be, you should be able to switch it on, but if, it does, if it's doing that, then. Uh, then you've got VNAV and LNAV, so if you click that on, and what you get in your um, primary display that's in front of you, uh, ARM in white, which is your auto throttle, and LNAV and VNAV that are in white as well, which means they're all armed and ready for when you've taken off. Uh, hang on. Oh, VNAV, so LNAV's on. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, VNAV's on. Oh, now I won't do anything. <coughs> That's fine. Um, yeah, VNAV's good enough. VNAV will take you up and then you can sort your own nav out. What was the takeoff it speed? 147, but you'll get a call out from your co pilot anyway. So he'll call 80 knots, then he'll call V1, and then he'll call rotate, which okay. is the point. A little tip when you're taking off, if you just put a little forward pressure on the control panel just to stop the front wheel from lifting off. Once he calls V1, you can let that go. And then when he calls rotate, you can start to ease back on the control panel. Okay. To about 10 degrees. And when you're starting to pick up, you can roll it back to about 15. And then you'll get a call out at 400 feet, which means you, at any point after that, Depending on the weather, and if you stay where you can flick your autopilot on. Okay. And your autopilot <clears throat> is on the right. There's two buttons C and D, A and B. You want to turn on the C and D, A. Okay. Right, so I'm going to start. Yeah, I'm going to release my a. brakes. I'm going to advance the throttles to 40%. Got them on 40%. You call out stable. There's no problems with them. And then you can advance it to the green mark. So I've just done that now. So I'm accelerating to take off speed. It's just a little bit of rudder to keep you on the centre line and push it forward on the control panel. I've just got 80 knots. and rotate so I can lift the aircraft up now to 10 degrees yeah unfortunately sounds out. Go on. positive rate and then you can flick your gear up yeah unfortunately Sam's uh, FS cloud has decided to die so we can't see him taking off but we will be able to with uh, Chris in front of me and then see the uh, fireball when uh, Noz tries behind me ah, 400 ah. feet I've clicked my autopilot on now, so it's going to follow the uh, flight plan that we put in. It's going to adjust the speed and the pitch. Okay. So you find you if you watch your speed, you can adjust your flaps. So you'll put your flaps up. Once the green speed arrow gets to the bottom of number one, you want to put your flaps to one. And then when it gets to the bottom of up, you want to reject them fully. 
Okay. Okay. Got my throttles set, stable, advancing till the little blue dot goes inside the green dot. And release. And Chris is away. Eighty knots. Do one rotates ten degrees, and I'm okay. Then now it's my go. Fireball Noz, exactly, Graham. <laughs> I've not crash landed yet. You've crash landed last night in a field in France. No, it wasn't road. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there's a difference there, I suppose. <laughs> At least it wasn't a field of cabbages. Right, let's line up. There's a soft landing. So, Chris is up, up and away. So, brakes on. So once you get to about 4,000, 5,000 feet, you can do the after takeoff checklist. Um, that just entails monitoring, um, switching the RTO anti-skid back to off, and then flicking the landing gear to the off position. Okay, interesting. I had to use heading strikes and turn the lens towards my path. I was a bit under cautious with the throttle. I don't think I as much throttle in as I should have done. V1. V1. Rotate. Rotate. Positive rate. Don't think. I think FS Cloud has just come back online for me now. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think. Okay. I think I'm online again with it now. Why is it trying to dive you back into the ground? Approaching minimums. Don't think. Are you being having enough switches on? 400. Yeah, they're both on. You just, if you've just got the 400 core, you can flick your autopilot on now. Yeah, being I've just gone off. Um. One thousand. We've got an AP, AP light flashing. Right, command is on. We've got no indicated airspeed now showing up in the IAS. It's now, IAS is now diving towards the ground. Diving to on auto throttle on, uh, B nav, L nav, and autopilot engaged. Flight directors both on. Right, auto throttles on. Uh, we now have no one have yeah I've got an AP light flashing just turn that off
just going to switch uh, Twitch on, see if I can have a look. Hang on. I think I had the AP engage on. I wasn't on command. But you want the one above it? It's You've got the one below. That's what I just put on. Banking. So, on. Banking. so that is... Your auto throttle is also not switched on. That needs to be switched on. On the panel. I don't think the switch on your uh, thing there you is go. turning it on. The reason it will be diving is because you've lost speed, so it's trying not to stall. Well, I think I have done the all thing. Should, should start taking you up now once it reaches a bit of a happier speed. Yeah, it's just the, auto the, the switch on my panel then doesn't work. That's what yeah, I was relying it, on, yeah. It can be a bit of a pain to assign, at the minute it's still a little bit of a pain to assign stuff to this. I should have caught a later flight, says Graham. And we're diving we again. Diving. Diving. And we're diving quite steeply again. Are your VNAVs come off for some reason. Oh, it's throttle gone off again. But this thing's plenty finicky, isn't it? So just monitor your auto throttle and V now for to keep that on. Well, mine is working fine. So, did you have any luck getting the um, the radar to work? It wouldn't seem to do anything on mine. Right, so we are climbing through 4,000 feet. Speed's holding at 230, which is... Oh, the throttle's gone off again. 4,000 feet. I'm already at uh, 1,200. I think a panel might be interfering with the... No, I think, so. I think it might be... If you flick the auto throttle switch to whatever the opposite of it is now on your panel it seems to be wanting to switch it off v now has gone off again because i click v now off the auto throttle goes. that's just the speed so what will happen is um if your speed clicks off it will slow down then the plane will automatically go into a dive to regain any speed so it doesn't stall the aircraft it's like a safety feature but a pain in the ass at the same time yeah, I can't put the auto throttle back on now. As I can. Wow, this, this isn't flipping simple, is it? Even trying to put the bloody autopilot on. One N one. So where you've just clicked on speed, you want to click it onto N one. It won't stay on. The panel. Your panel might be interfering with it, like Chris said. Yeah. Potentially. Don't know whether it's worth just unplugging it. Right, I think. Yeah, I think it's a panel. It's probably just upsetting it a little bit. Well, mine is working. Oh, Have you turned uh, the auto front off on your panel? Well, no, if I turn it... Whatever way I do, it doesn't like it. No, I have just turned mine off and just uh, pressed it in the plane instead. Because it, it the panel does not work with the, the airplane. With the auto front. Yeah. It's... Really strange. No, if I. Um, if I click it to arm and turn it on, it stays on. When you loaded in, did you load up the standard SES and then load up zero hey. after? No. As well, because your flaps might be. It might be stopping you from climbing. Yeah, flaps are up. Flaps are down. 
stick your flaps up and then you want to reset your altitude as well you need to press the standard button next to the autopilot you've got the one that Chris was telling you about the barrow and the mints you just press the standard or the STV button in there try not to say that too often <laughs> that, yeah but you you might find that'll stay on now you or not no it doesn't Turn that panel off. I think it must be that. It is definitely. <coughs> right, the panel's off now. As a feat as well, you can switch your landing lights on and you can let the uh, passengers. Well, it's not the panel because it's still not staying on. not climbing anymore. Do me a favor, Steve, have a quick look. Um, click your init breath on the FMC. Yeah. Then go index. Yeah. Then go take off. Yeah. And what have you got there for cruise altitude? Uh, 28. So it is definitely set. Bugger. It was not climbing above. Well, actually, no, it's climbing just very, very slowly. We're on the right course now. Keep getting auto throttle. Keep coming off. Yet my. Your altimeter to standard as well. Because it will be showing a. The incorrect value on the. Uh, where's that? Um, so, just to the left of where you're switching the auto throttle arm, there's a button with the uh, ST. That middle bit. It will set the standard. Uh... Where it says 77 to the left of that. Oh, STD, yeah. So that to what? Just press it in in the centre and then it will reset your auto meter. Okay. Bloody auto throttle. Well, I'm nearly at cruise altitude. Oh. You don't have this. Well, exactly, Chaos. You don't have this issue in a 172. <laughs> No, it's just pressing ignition It just keeps gear. going off. What the throttle just keeps turning itself off. That's strange you have that problem. I had not. Chris are doing some pretty uh, nope. illegal fly maneuvers up here. It's pretty cool though. Oh, I know why. Steve, that red flashing light. Press that. I haven't got a red. That. I haven't got a red flashing light. No, it's turned off now. That your that uh, uh, AG light. Press that and uh, cancel that. Uh, yeah, when the throat goes off, I get the a AT. What does that say? AT what? Uh, AT power reset or something. Why do I get an alarm for cabin altitude? Ooh, you didn't set your pressure. Uh oh. This is madness. Where do I do that? Overhead panel on the right near the bottom. Your cruise must be 28,000, you'll land at 200. The auto throttle stays on for about 20 seconds and then turns off. If that.
Okay, a bit longer that what? time. I cannot find that. Okay, I'm over the RHC. I was just looking at the... Uh, the both Liverpool flight director really switches really cool. on. Yeah, both flight director switches are on. They stayed on now. I didn't like something before. Like something. Ooh, you might be having that uh, autopilot like from the same app. Yes. You would yeah. Have a trip. yeah, if you have a look in the calibration settings. Or your. Yeah, it's come, gone off again. Have a look where? What, on the, on the um, tablet? Yeah, on the tablet. Uh, configure and customize, and then calibration. Obviously, just check everything's still at zero. Uh, pitch null zone is zero 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 one two. Just if you change that uh, zero, the green zero on the far right to one, it should change that all to zero. That's why I, I just had to do. I just keep everything at zero, and it seems to work. No, that's not. We've got it on. Oh god, that's only going up. No, don't go. Change it to one. That's got one one two five zero zero in it now and flat detents. Hmm. I'm a bit more concerned that your throttles may be spiking. Yeah, they both look like they're uh, you've got a throttle and a little bit of right throttle going on. Rather than them, once you put the auto pilot in, uh, the auto throttle in, it should just hold them together. Yeah, one's accelerating and one's staying, one's dropping back and going up. Yeah, try to just jiggle them a little bit so that they're still on the screen. True Boeing repairman. They probably, Ryanair, right there's some sort of elastic band procedure for that. How do I turn on the passenger? Oops. Oh no, the cabin one. How do I do I adjust that? Uh, yeah, Is I'm that using that? a joystick. Nos, where your light controls are on the overhead panel, your logo position, anti collision wing. So that yeah. is your passenger oxygen and pressure. One where it says auto, you want that to be 26,000 just below that, or 28,000, depending on what you're on. So I think 28,000 that you've got your landing altitude to set that to 200. Yeah, I have that auto flight altitude 28,000 and uh, it's back and on land. You know, after you started the uh. Check my thrust is not on. Um, no, I don't think it's a joystick conflicting with it. I don't get any problems in any other aircraft. Did you start your, start uh, your uh, engines? Did you put the packs back to auto, or are they still off? That panel I was just asking you about. There. It's all on auto. Okay, yeah, cool. See. Pressure. Right. Yeah, I've got trying to keep behind the auto throttles. Not worried about cabin pressure at the moment. Something you no, want to be doing. Nice. Yeah. Top of descent is programming your ILS. So in the standby of your radio, you want one eleven decimal three five for your ILS. Oh my god, this is really, really annoying me that I cannot get this to shut up with that beeping. If you want it to shut up, then you're not bothered about your passengers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just well, I cannot that see where... Left that panel, Nos, there's an out it's... horn out. If you press that, it should stop your buzzing. 
it's fine these guys fly with the 737 a lot it's just me and Noz are complete noobs to it so they are talking us through it it's okay and there's obviously issues going on there whether some of my kit is conflicting with this auto throttle I've unplugged the um, the SciTech panel with the auto throttle arm on it um, but the auto throttle just won't stay on for more than like 10 seconds so something's conflicting somewhere um, it's my descent now yeah, me as well. Runway 28. Uh, 7 8, which you want to input in your course. Um, when you're or autopilot at the top. Wait, why am I at 3,300 feet? 300 feet or 33,000 feet? 33,000 feet. I don't know. You're not going to be able to get down in time from there, though, I don't think. You might have to do uh, a bit of a circle. Yeah, but my altitude says 28,000 feet. I haven't got above 17,000. We've got 18 miles to go to the next waypoint. Yeah, Amy, where, where? these two guys, it's Sam and Chris are here, they're helping us through it. It's difficult for them, to. or trying to, it's difficult for them not being able to see exactly what's going on. You know, they can watch the stream, but they're getting a 20-second lag. But there's definitely an issue here with my auto throttle. I, I think it's just having an issue with some of your hardware. Yeah. That must be what it is. Anything I can think of that would cause any particular problems with it, because... Everything else is okay, I think, isn't it? Just assuming it's the auto throttle. Um, everything else has stayed on, but I'm not. I'm still stuck at seventeen thousand feet. It's climbing ridiculously slowly. Yeah, and I have problem with with the oxygen. <laughs> I no, a guy in chat saying it's my engines, not my hardware. Oh god! Middle screen. The oil pressure is fine on both the engines. One is uh, both ones running eighty eight percent. One's at eighty nine. Yeah, chaos. I turned off the switch panel. I mean, the auto throttle should be controlling everything to do with that anyway. I think it's working. Yeah, it's staying on for like three or four seconds now. I'm just going off so it, something it's not liking obviously but it does, these two throttles are going independently of each other which doesn't make any sense at all no at what point have we got to start descending by the way um, probably in about another two or three minutes but then you're not that high, so you can probably stay up a bit longer. Uh, I need the landing gear. If you turn your FMC to the legs page, it'll actually give you a list of all the waypoints of the altitude you need to be at. Huh? So that'll give you an indication of when you need to start descending. So our geo got to be at 19,700, that's fine. Uh, I've got that ages to go, Lambda, before I get to... Um, so at Sitku, I've got to be at 16,000 feet. Have you set your speed in the FMC so the VNAV works? Mm, no, don't think I did, because we rushed the, the setting the second time, because the issues I have. It could be that, you reckon? I can't. Is, I can't. That, is that legs page giving me speeds? Uh, actually, yes, it is. So it has been set there. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Bloody auto throttle. It's really frustrating. They're both. Uh... What's the beep beep? It's cabin pressure. 
Yeah, we have not heard that yet. My poor passenger, or the door shut anyway. The, the poor passengers won't like that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your captain speaking. Is there anybody on board who knows how to fly a plane? <laughs> Thank you, Larwood. Um, so what do they say? It's at Lanver is at uh, 21,000 feet. At Sitku is at 1,600. And we're flying towards um, Pennell. So we're there. Getting dark. Um, independent throttles mapped, Steve, on your uh, throttle. Yeah, control. I've got them mapped separately. I'm wondering if you should just turn it so that one controls the throttle, because then it might just stick them together for you. Let's try that. Uh, joystick. Sitex throttle quadrant. Uh, so three is. Uh, it's just what's it just called? It's just called um, a throttle, and that's it. There you go. And two. Yeah, it's throttle. Okay, my plane has just no dives into the ocean. Waypoint where you are, Chris. I've just blacked out. Um, just before Banks are. Just coming up to that now, so I'm hoping. All my screen's just gone off. It'll be uh, pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm blacking out. Sort the cabin pressure. I can't because I've blacked out. I do not see where the cabin pressure is. I can't see anything. I've got a black screen. Change of view to outside. Doesn't help you with the cabin pressure, does it? I can't change that from out here. I knew there was something fishy with. If you want to get your, if you want to get your screen back on, Steve, kind of a cheat out of it. If you go into settings in general, you can uncheck the box that says simulate blackout, red out, and hypoxia effects, and then you'll be able to see your panel again. Or descend. I have to say, I have this feeling that this plane might be fundamentally broken. So I've done probably 40 flights in this thing. That's never happened to me. Panel was showing everything was set 100% correctly, and it just knows how to see it. Um, yeah. So, what was that? Settings, what? Uh, settings and general. And then where, where you've got your flight model bit, just below that. Simulate blackout, red out, and okay. If you want to check that, it'll uh, give you your screen back. There we go. In Ryanair is crap, yeah, but I'm okay. Still flying. I wonder. I've done the latest update on X Plane. I wonder if that has anything to do with the stability issue on. Where do where do we set, set that so you don't Sick. back out? Where do you do that? Oh, there it is. Right, where's this cabin Set. pressure oh. thing? Uh... Well, I've tried to look everywhere and I cannot find it. On the overhead panel on the right hand side near the bottom. Uh, Set at 28,000. Is it on auto? Just below and to the right of that. Yeah, it's on auto. So I shouldn't be getting the warning. Um. 
Oh, it's still on course. Set current. I've done the cabin pressure. Look, 28,000. Cabin pressure is set. Just above that. You what? Or your pecs on auto, which is just above that. Next to wiper on your left, someone's saying. There's the wipers. Oh, yeah, packs the uh, cabin pressures. Set on auto. I don't know. I actually think we have broken. Yeah, our jets a step too far for my brain. <laughs> Is the answer for this? I'm thinking it might have some issues with it because um, Chris has just done what he's done as well. Things that need ironing out with it potentially. The auto throttle's working now and I'm actually climbing to an altitude that I don't need to be climbing at. Um, it's saying 21. If you want to check your map for uh, top of descent, there should be a green circle with the TD next to it, that'll be where you are. Uh, you can do a manual descent. I'm descending now to 21,000, so that's what I should be at, I think. Oh no, I should be at 16,000. Okay. This could be interesting, isn't it? Shut down the alert, can you? How'd you turn off the alert then? Normally it's a light in front of you. Yeah, it's not on the master warning. Is it on the auto warning just down to the right of that smaller square button? Yeah, cabin altitude, it's saying. It's lit up coming out at you. I don't know how to stop it. To the left of that, there's where your uh, panel is. There's a little button called Alt Horn Cutout. If you press that, I should stop it. I'm gone. On the plus side, flying into the ocean at 470 knots indicate gave me an OK landing. I'll just stick with the buzzing. <laughs> I'll never get an OK landed on this, it's rubbish. Right. Out horn overhead next to wiper. Where's the wiper? Left wiper, right wiper. Can't see anything else. So you've got... <laughs> no good saying dude at me in the chat. There's a 20 second delay between me and what you're seeing. I don't know what I'm looking at. It's the first time I've flown this plane. So there's no good oh, saying dude at me. This is why me and Chris are helping you because we're more patient than... Than people in chat, right. yeah. Um, um, there's a big pressure gauge, a big circle gauge. Yeah, got that. Oh, I can see it now. Thank God Give for that. that. Push. Yeah. <sighs> Silence. Right, I'm now not descending. Why aren't I descending? Despite the fact I put 16,000 in, I'm not going down. Commands on. Should be there. On. And it is now. Sorry, Chris, I've pushed right in front of you. Um. 
I've just pushed in front of you, come off the bank so to intercept the ILS. But it's okay, my claim is a smoldering wreck in the RC. Which means I'm not going to make, yeah, I'm not going to be able to land. If you swim west, Chris, there's an oil rig you could probably climb onto. Set the vertical speed. Set the vertical speed is a negative. I'll be drifting west, so I should get there. I can work out which bloody. There's no one to get down in time now because we've got there's only two legs to go according to this. So I'm somewhere over island, I think. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't look like it from there. Uh, no, I'm, I'm still out. over the sea, yeah. But I'm just not descending. Follow the oil slick at all, guide you straight in. <laughs> V nav and L nav on and IR will descend auto. Yeah, vertical speed's at minus 900, I've got altitude set at 15,600. Vertical speed's armed, if I put altitude hold. I start climbing. Yeah, you definitely don't want the altitude hold. I can't. I've switched off, Steve. I can see. Yeah, the I can't. Green yeah, I still can't descend. Sorry, I can't see my oil anymore. But is there not a vertical speed uh, button with a dot? He's got that. Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, hang on, I've just put. Yeah, yeah, that's dropping you now. There you go. We're going down. That's following your profile, so you should be all good. So now you've done that, Steve, you want to program your approach. There's just two little things you need to do. In your autopilot panel at the top, you've got two little dials uh, with a box above them that say course, then a heading. You need to set those both to 278 if you've not already. Um, headings on 269. To the left of that, you've got a course right on the far end, near where the auto throttle arm is. It's like a, a twisty button with a cross, a oh, yellow right. cross on yeah. it. I've set those both to 278. After that, on your radio panel. Two seven eight and headings 278. You can leave that your head in all sorts of auto adjust itself because you're following the L nav anyway. So then if you go down to your radio panel. Uh, which I can do on my panel in front of me, but okay, yeah. I mean, your nav one, you want to set at 111.35, which will pick up your ILS for runway 28 at Dublin. Uh, 11135. Okay, done that. And then when, when you get a little bit closer in, you will start to pick up the... Uh, ILS, which is IDW, it will pop up on your main screen with ILS and it will tell you how far away you are from the DME. Well, I've run out of legs on my thing now. And it's raining. Oh, look at those rain effects. Now mine's just a solid wall of water. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to land. I'm guessing it's just uh, going to carry on flying straight now. Why, uh, my, uh, why is my uh, all my fuel pumps uh, saying no pressure? Oh, I've run out of fuel! Might be why. 
Can How do the heck did I do that? Yeah, stick it next to Chris. Oh. Yeah, because I was too high, I've run out of legs. So I've overshot where I should be, I think. Means I'm not going to be able to get it on the, run, on the ground. Back into Back the into right of me, actually. So you could yeah, actually swing around with the map. 16, runway 16. Or if you were to fly south for a few minutes and then come in by and turn. Yeah, we're well, still at 18,000 feet and not going anywhere. That's because now has gone off again. And I'm the flight director has gone off again. Just disappeared off my screen as well. Now I've most disabled. This is not going well. Yeah, it's not going well. A very, very steep learning curve. Uh, yeah, we're on FS cloud, cloud currently, Hamie. Well, I have, to, uh, I have just need to learn how to install that FS economy, and uh, then I will. Stick to the 172. Yeah, I think I'm with you there. <laughs> I don't, I I, I don't get this problem in the Kodiak. No. Jets aren't for everyone, but at least you've tried. And at least well, you I'm, I'm not saying I won't try again. I'm not, not saying that, but well, I, I would just. I'm definitely try again. I, but I'm more than happy with setting up the FMC. That bit worked fine. Okay, I had the issues with the plane, so getting it started was fine. It's just this bit is frustrating me now because the auto throttle kept turning on and off it's not following the course it's not descending it's i, I don't know I'm, I'm sure it's me um elnav's off apparently now uh, did you program the arrival again or was it just the i think it's just, the, I think it's just you just got in the air yeah, we didn't do the arrival i'm not yeah. I, i'm listening to amy gaz um but I'm also trying to listen to Sam and Chris um, that I've known for longer and they've been the ones that have taught me today. So I'm not saying I'm not listening to Hamey. Um, it's hard to listen to someone with a 20 second stream delay as well. You've got to allow for, allow for that being an issue. And I don't know my way around the plane. I don't know where all the switches are and what they'll do. Um, in a 172, I can, or the, the Kodiak or the PC-12, I can jump in and fly it. Have you crash landed Chris on the seat? Yep. Well, I'm out of fuel as well, so I'm coming down very fast. That, that's <laughs> probably a good idea, Chaos. Um, well, that being, being on the stream uh, is as as its pluses, um, but at the moment, yeah, I'm just um, I'm not going to be able to land this. I will just see how long the autopilot can get me. Um, so I may as well just at least descend and get below this. Get below this cloud. So yeah, setting up the FMC, it was actually fairly straight, well using um, Simbrief was actually fairly straightforward. That's, that's a battle in itself. Yeah. In that sort. So but that's it's just sort of why this isn't doing what it should be doing in the air. Yeah, El Nav keeps and the Nav can that keeps going off and had issues with the um, auto throttle. Typically, the auto throttle stayed on now. <laughs> yeah, it sort of stops lower, isn't it? So yeah, I'm just heading wildly over island. Um, so yeah, in uh, in FS cloud. Um, We're all crosswind here. Yeah. That's where we should be. Noz is sound, uh, Chris is somewhere ditched in the RSC. Noz has run out of fuel, so he's there. Uh, I'm here heading towards Northern Ireland, and Sam's roughly where he should be. Considering we only took off from East Midlands Airport, well, we didn't take off. The flight itself wasn't that long. Yeah, I'm going down now. Yeah, we're flying to EIDW into into Dublin, but I'm not going to get that far. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm not descending now. Well, I'm just very, very slowly. It's because the autopilot keeps turning off. I at least thought by getting it on the ground that it might have been a good end to the stream. Um, but uh, it doesn't appear. The only thing I'm going to hit the, gonna end up on the ground now is to smash into it, I think. Well, you can always just turn off your plane. <laughs> yeah, it flies like a regular plane. That's actually not a bad idea, is it? Turn your auto throttle off. Turn your autopilot pilot off. It's actually nice to hand fly the uh, Z boat. That's a lie. I've just, like I said, just got the uh, Ryanair fanfare playing saying uh, congratulations on it. Let's descend. Whereas cloud doesn't help things. Yeah, I did have a blackout, but I, I turned it off in the settings for X plane. Got some cloud, but nothing major, which is a little bit annoying. So uh, I can't use Active Sky on Nevis Cloud. Well, we can see the ground now. Hit the overspeed warning now. It's trying to get below the cloud. Yeah, I did put the flaps down to uh, try and slow me down. And typically it's raining. Uh, yeah, Sam's watching on the stream, so he can see what uh, sort of disaster I'm heading towards. I've been flicking in and out of the stream. I haven't got it on at the minute, I don't think. Not, Not a lot to miss, is me plummeting towards uh, the ground. where my name is. I'm just at the end of the way. Well, once I see Thanks. ground, I'm going to try and turn around. Uh, my FS cloud name, Sims and stuff. No, so you're still in the air. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in the air. <laughs> yeah, you're still 
You're doing a pretty good I'm job. Trying I'm trying to. I'm trying to get to this plane's land. I'm coming in hot. Twenty-five hundred. I'm literally right at the end of the runway. If that helps at all. To put an aim oh, at me, I, I I think I have lost too much altitude. What's the um, runway heading? Oh, I see the runway! I see the runway! Maybe I maybe I made it! You're looking at a heading of 278. Uh, what, from the other end? Or were you coming on 98? Or if you come in slightly further from the north, you have got 167. Not that I'm going to get anywhere near the runway, but... Wow. If I actually made the landing, it would be epic. With no fuel. Standing by at the end of the runway with the camera and us, so... <laughs> well, I'm trying to get down there. Low and easy. I don't make it, I don't think I made it. Slow down. Yeah, I'm quite a way away yet. I'm just using a um, little nav map. 1,000. 1,000 feet stabilized, Mr. Perkins. Yeah, I'm crashing down. So close. Really close. Yeah, a little bit close to the ground. get there. Oh yeah, that's a bit of a steep descent there, mate. <laughs> come on, come on. Wait this. <laughs> oh, it's leveling it out. Your wheel's down. Yeah. <laughs> but I have three red lights, so they're not down at all. They're not down. They're not you down, green light. <laughs> I'm just looking and I can't see any wheels. <laughs> hey, wheels down. Yeah, but I've got three red, three, three red lights. Mm. I'm coming in! Oh, God! Ouch! Ouch! Yeah, having landing gear would probably help with the landing, Nels. Yeah. Ow! Steve, your wheels oh. are, ne are never locked in flight. I'm oh. down! <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that's how you land the plane. To Dublin. Yeah, well, welcome to Dublin. <laughs> Ignore the fireball. Well, I, I actually <laughs> landed just, just short of the runway. Uh, <laughs> Should we place we bit, bets on how many of the Vikings passengers survive? <laughs> yeah, <Time> none. <laughs> well, there, there's your problem. <laughs> I've blown the tire. How can you blow the tire when the landing gear's up? Yeah, that I don't takes know. some doing. Well, my, both my engines are on fire. I don't think you blew the tire, Noz. I think you embedded the tire in the touchdown zone. <laughs> wow. I actually don't know. Well, you, you, don't need will, you don't need wills for landing, only taking off, says Larwood. <sighs> On a plus, it's a very nice plane. Very blustery day. It's very windy actually at Dublin. There's a 17. So yeah, being buffeted around quite a lot. 
How the hell do you, do you have more fuel than I have? You're probably flat out all the time. No. But yeah, mine was uh, flying 3,000 feet. Right. Uh, oh, that's Chris. I just, I just saw a little Cessna coming to me. Has he jumped into a Cessna now? You're ascending, Steve. I know. What's the runway heading? Yeah. 90 something, wasn't it? 98. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my explain just. <laughs> Max speed difference. Perfect. Touchdown, sync rate, okay. Everything is a fail. If I actually land this, I'll be fairly impressed. One of the longest streams I've done in a long time, three and a half hours. Well, it has been fun. Challenging, I think, is the word we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris and Sam will both be off to the drinks cabinet in a minute. <laughs> you did what you set out to do, though, to be fair. You set the plane up, other than the issue you had before that, and you started the engines. That That's what I wanted to do, yeah. What code has uh, that airport we should have been landing in? Right, there we go. I can see names in front of me now. So I should now be on runway heading. Co India Delta Whiskey, Dublin. That's what? Just popped up on my screen, Steve. Wipers, yeah, what's we'll the. You seem yeah, we'll to be quite slow. Uh -huh. I am quite slow. Where's the wipers? Uh... Head panel. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, I'm doing 215 knots. Uh, what is the ID for that airport? EIDW. Seatbelts, yeah, I think a seatbelt isn't going to save them. The weather's not helping. Oh, approaching the end of the glide slope. So when they find the bodies, they'll, they'll all still be in the seats, I suppose. That's the that's the plus with the seat belts. Blimey, that's buffety. Do you see any glimmer of hope of the runway? Yes, I can. Right, I have the runway in sight, or a yeah. runway in sight. Press that right on the end of the runway for you, sir. Right. Uh, I think my landing gear. I think my landing gear switch works on my panel. What's the gear? What's the key for the landing gear down? There's a big lever to the right hand side of the main panel. Just drag that down and it'll come down. Oh, I got it. Feet stabilized, Mr. Perch altitude set. Yeah, for now I will stick with the uh, Cessna. I don't know, I want to learn this, but. Yeah, I will definitely learn this. Uh, it was fun that I was ran out of fuel. Yeah, I just had a fuel warning come on. Yeah, Does when we do this, we need to have maximum fuel on. Does it have hail or snow? Um, snow is not really mapped, which is a shame actually. No, uh, snow's mapped, just not lying on the ground. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Don't forget the passenger clapping on the tablet when you land, says Chaos. If 
quite surprising right, that doesn't look like a bad approach. Oh, I was just thinking the same thing. It doesn't look too bad on the stream, it's just you've got a bit of a crosswind, but you're flying into it. What, what's your speed? Um, 400. 160. Right down to about 140. Yeah, I'm trying to juggle it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of doing 10 things at once, isn't it? It's a bit... You drop your flaps down to about 25 or 30 and then try and keep it around 140. 300. Should stabilize. Approaching minimums. Damn, can you see me? Can, uh, can, can you see that yeah. I've changed uh, the plane? 200. I'm not really Cessna's worried two. about your plane for a minute, Moss. Little Cessna's in front of me now, yeah. Like a little welcoming party. That's strange, then. That is changing plane for you. I need to re install my... 50. 40. 30, 20, 10, Like a rumba. A little puff of black smoke, but better than can be expected. And <laughs> the music's playing in the back as well. It's got, it's a lot better than my landing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go back to the hope you enjoyed your flight. Yeah, we nearly didn't get here. <laughs> It's actually a Ryanair, Ryanair advert Ryanair playing. playing, that's quite cool. Yeah, it's, it is very cool. Wow. I actually really enjoyed that landing. A lot to do. Things considered, that was a very, very good landing, to be fair. If that would have gone smoother um, Special, in uh, flight... Uh, yes, you can hear rain in the game. Thank you for flying Ryanair. If that, if the yeah. auto throttles and stuff would have worked, and the approach would have worked, that would have been really enjoyable. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do anyway, but there's a lot of extra stuff to deal with that was a bit of a pain in the ass. But all, I say, all things considered, you landed on the runway, so. Probably not parking where he should be. As always, next time. Oh, exactly, Chaos. Yeah, I'll certainly do it again. Each time you do it, you'll f you'll remember one little thing that will make it a little bit easier. Yeah. Same time, it can be very frustrating, but very rewarding. Well, it's the little bits that I like, like that's on the tablet, you know, the, the announcements in the back, you near people wandering around yeah, and stuff. Immersion wise, it's yeah. a really, really good little aeroplane. Um, right, parking brake on. And. Oh, Chris, that is some taxi. <laughs> He's taking off. <laughs> <laughs> This little Cessna just went past me about 60 knots. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> there we go. Uh, ground services, set chocks, GPU, connect. I didn't like that, did it? There. You know what I have to go for is again, I never took off, says Chaos, exactly. Uh, so there we go, so Chris is there, Noz is there, uh, I made it, uh, Sam's there, and Hamey that was in the in the chat is over there. Um, I'd call that a win. Uh, with a few issues on the way, um, I was just going to think about nosediving it into the ground, but made it to Dublin. 
after uh, three hours and 37 minutes of stream hi carumba um so there we go we, we will do i will do some more jets again um it was definitely a very steep learning curve um and yeah shame i had the issues in flight but actually landing it really enjoyed that landing it by hand um we'll certainly do some more don't forget if you're uh, watching this on youtube and you've got this far huh, uh, um we've got a brilliant uh, we've got a brilliant discord uh, server um that's full of uh, these idiots mainly and uh, people from all, all other sorts of sims uh, trucking um bus coach uh, train uh, racing there's everything in there um so if you're into flying um and uh, yeah you think you could uh, come along for some multiplayer flights with uh, us lot then do please join us in discord um and yeah uh, exactly chaos well done thanks to sam and chris yeah you guys have got the patience of saints uh c coping with us lot so yes thank you very much um so i will end that there um we made it um we have done um so yes thank you very much for joining us and uh, teaching us sam thank you no problem uh chris as always thank you very much sir only a pleasure and very well done and uh noz well we got here yeah. <laughs> yeah, I crashed landed <laughs> right you, in the, the run, uh, by, before the runway. So, but yeah, yeah, the, you made it here. And we both ended up on the runway. We don't need to split heads. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Hamey's now following. Thank you much, Hamey. And uh, Chaos, who's um, abandoned his plane back at East Midlands to go and cook a Sunday dinner. I hope it's nice, Chaos. <laughs> um, and yes, be back streaming oh, again. Yeah. And Tuma, thank you much for the follow. We're back streaming again on actually I might not be able to do Wednesday uh, one night in the week uh, where we do some more flight uh, might be in these again uh, but might jump in back in props for a um, for an evening and then do jets again next Sunday but we'll see um, but certainly back in the week and then back again on Friday night with something multiplayer and back Saturday night with some trucking so plenty of streams for me um, say good evening everybody good evening, good evening everyone. everyone good evening thanks guys <laughs> <laughs>